having some fun there, my friends. Hi, how's everybody doing? We're gonna have a buh last today, my friends. Eric Andreas, your guitar sage here, and today, oh my God, friends, we have been working hard on this. We are gonna have a blast today. This is what we're doing, friends. If you're looking for the seven weekly practice focuses for all guitar players in all genres, whether you are a complete newbie or a veteran of, of the guitar, my friends, you're in the right place, okay? So um, first off, some orders of business. If you are not right now at yourguitarsage.com slash live, it would behoove you to be. Here's why. Some folks are still watching on YouTube and that's fine. There's a chat there. I don't, I'm not looking at that chat. We have a chat over at the live uh, URL, yourguitarsage.com slash live. Two or three other reasons why you would wanna be there. I've created a PDF for you today that I'll be referring to constantly throughout the broadcast so that you know exactly what it is that we're talking about and how to read it, how to understand it in the whole nine yards, okay? So that's where you're gonna get the PDF, okay? If you're on YouTube right now, if you look in the description of the video, you'll see some links there. One is to head over there and then, yeah, I think, I think there's only one link in there for, for you. So go to there right now if you're not doing that. If you want the PDF, if you want me to see your questions during the chat. And bottom line, we have an absolute insane offer that I'm gonna be telling you about later as well, okay? so. YourGuitarStage.com slash live, that's where you want to go. Oh, also, there is a little cut and paste, if you will, tweet thing that you can tweet there. Send that out to folks, share this, etc. And what we do is at the half hour mark and at the, at the end of the hour mark, we're going to announce three winners both. So six total winners, three at the half hour mark, three at the hour mark. Uh, and those are folks that are going to win my $22 ebook bundle, which is, includes blues, which includes a lot of these licks that I was playing there. A lot of the, you saw, I was, I was pulling some stuff straight out of um, Stairway to Heaven. Uh, so all sorts of classic licks and what have you, blues, uh, ebook one, ebook two. Anyhow, winners are gonna win that. Also, uh, today, friends, this is basically how it's gonna go. For one hour, I'm gonna teach you, okay? I'm gonna teach you these seven focused practice areas that every guitar player uses. You're gonna see massive results from this, okay? That's what's happening in hour one. At the end of hour one, I'm going to be doing all the uh, giveaways, okay? So for those that have registered ahead of time, that's what we're gonna be doing, okay? Doing those giveaways, over $4,000 worth of goodies. Uh, we're giving away seven unstoppable guitar system memberships that's right and we're doing and one lucky winner is going to win this beautiful 1985 candy apple red fender stratocaster that i just purchased from george grun at grun guitars yes the most famous uh, music store in the world uh just bought this from him talked to him about it in the whole nine yards somebody's going to win this today along with a lifetime membership to the unstoppable guitar system what? Yeah, so pretty cool stuff. So we'll be doing that at the end of the hour. Um, and then two hours of Q&A. That means you will get your question answered if you're in the right place. If you're chatting in YouTube there, I can't see that just because I've got so many monitors here right now to track what we're doing and, and so I can see the, uh, the chat over at yourguitarstage.com slash live. So that's where you need to be, okay? All right. Just to make sure that you're in the right place, I want to ask you two questions. You might have heard me ask this before, but I'll ask it again. When you pick up the guitar, okay, do you find yourself not knowing what to practice or you're practicing the same old things, right? And you're like, I really want to get beyond this, but I keep practicing the same old things. Or would a step-by-step, day-by-day practice schedule that graduates every day, every week, so that you're not like, that's too much or that's too little, but you start off doing what, what's necessary and then you're building up these skills as the year goes on. Would that be helpful for you? My friends, if you answered yes, then you are in the right place. I always like to ask those things because you may think that um, we're doing something different here today and I, and I really wanna make sure that you're in the right place, okay? So, my friends, if that is, if you answered yes to that, you're in the right place, we're gonna dig in here. Now, um, let me make sure there's no other pieces of information that we need to, to talk about before we start. You got the tweet bit, uh, doing, the, doing the giveaways. Okay, so here's the deal. So, the PDF that I'm going to be referring to a lot here throughout the broadcast is something that would really behoove you to have, yourguitarstage.com slash live. 
Now, we're skipping over the title page, obviously, and then there's a little bit in the beginning. You can read that later. Don't worry about it right now. The PDF is yours to have. But on the next page, you're going to see tablature, and we're gonna be going over seven key focus areas, practice focus, focus areas, okay? And I'm going to be teaching these. There's regular musical notation for those that read musical notation, and then there's tablature. Most folks can read tablature. It's like the easiest way to transcribe guitar music and without having to learn how to read music. So it's very, very easy, but I know that there are some folks here that are watching this right now that don't know how to read music. So I'm gonna go over it with you really quick, just a super easy tablature primer so that you understand what we're doing, okay? So if you're looking at your PDF right now, or if you're not, then stop and just listen to what I'm saying so that when you do download it, you're, you'll know what we're, what we're talking about, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna give you the tablature primer. If you need that, now's the time to listen, okay? So you're gonna see on that first page, that first example, okay, um, I'm gonna tell you the name of it too. Uh, so after the title page, and then there's a bit there where I'm telling you, it's called two finger, two ones, three twos, four, four threes, okay? A lot of this is gonna seem Greek to you. By the end of it, you're totally gonna to understand it. You're gonna be a friggin' ninja, okay? So here's the deal. You're going to see on that page, you're gonna see musical notation. Ignore that if you don't read music. Underneath it, you see something that says tab, and you're gonna see six lines and then a bunch of numbers. Don't get confused by that. The lines that are vertical are just separating measures, okay? You can think of them like periods in a sentence or just like, just chopping it, chopping. It's like pages in a book, okay? They don't mean anything musically. They just mean this is a section of music. That's it, okay? Um, the six lines, you're gonna see those. So from the lowest line to the highest line, it goes the lowest pitch guitar string, the low E, to the highest pitch guitar string, the high E, okay? So that's what you're going to, that's, those are the, what the lines represent, okay? Then the numbers represent the fret. So if you see zero, on the very highest line, but well, that means it's the highest string, zero fret, just means the open note, you know, or O for open. If you see a one on there, then you're going to depress the first fret. If you see a two, then you're gonna be pressing down the, the second fret, third, third fret, and so on and so forth. Now I'm gonna work these exercises with you, okay, but, but that's for folks, I know there's some folks out there that are like, I didn't know, I don't know how to read tablature, Eric, so, Thank you for you know priming me for that. Uh, and I'm gonna be doing these exercises with you so you're not gonna be lost, okay? So just hang in there, all right? Here we go. So, and I'm gonna tell you these, what these seven areas are right now, okay? I create all my books and my systems and everything else according to how I wish, dear God, someone had taught me as a kid because it just, or as an adult or anything else, just because I yearned, I yearned for organization and a step-by-step -step way to do things that I can't mess up. And then when I create that for myself or my students, then you guys get to be privy to that, okay? Um, so. These are seven areas that I, found, that I find to be indispensable to guitar players in all genres, and you just can't get away from them, okay? They're just ones that you're going to be using all the time. And I'm gonna just spit them out right now, and then when we get to each one, I'm gonna tell you why it's important, and then we're gonna do a, le a, a little lesson on it for the page here, and you're gonna understand all that. Um, so, cool, okay? So here are the seven areas, all right? And you don't have to know what they are, just wait till I get to them, and then I'll explain them more. So, alternate picking, hammer-ons and pull-offs, economy picking, okay? A lot of people don't know what that is, I'll get to it, it's insanely amazing, okay? Stretch and reach, for those of you that think you have small hands, hmm, that's 99.9% .9 of us, isn't it? We all think we have small hands, we don't, it's just that we don't know the proper technique. But Eric, you don't know me, I've got a real small hand, I don't want to hear it. I've taught thousands of students, you don't have a small enough hand to not play, unless it's a little tiny baby doll hand, possibly, but I'm gonna, you're gonna need to see the hand. Picks or it didn't happen. Uh, stretch and reach, okay? Uh, scales and sequences, polyphony, meaning many voices, I'll explain that when I get to it, and finger picking. Those are the seven areas, okay? And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking at seven different exercises today. I'm gonna be telling you why it's so important that you need to be focusing on these areas and then 
We're going to do an exercise for each one, okay? Here we go. So alternate picking is the first one. Um, I'm going to give you a little definition. So alternate picking is strict down up picking. So if we were to be picking a scale, let's say, let's play, let's say we're picking the G major scale, then it would just be down, up, down, up every single time. So with my pick, I'm going down, up, 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 down. Every single time, no matter what, till the end of time, amen. Okay, makes sense? That's what alternate picking is. Now, why is that important? Well, Folks say, I can't get my pick to do what I want it to do. Your pick is an inanimate object. It, it's not doing anything. It's just sitting there. It's you who's not picking right. Okay, let's get that straight first and let's fix that. Okay, so in order to do this, what we need to do is we need to train the brain. Anything that you train the brain, whether it's good or bad, it's going to get good at doing. So if you're practicing the wrong technique, but you're practicing it a whole bunch, you're going to get great at doing the wrong thing. The brain doesn't know how to decipher good and bad in those ways. It just does what it's been told. So if you're doing something ritualistically over and over again in any, in any area of your life, but specifically guitar right now, if you're picking something the wrong way, but you're doing it over and over again, you're building a habit. You're build, building neural paths. This is the way the brain works. I didn't make it up. The brain does it. Okay. So it's important that we train it to do what it's supposed to do. And that's where alternate picking comes in great. Okay, so alternate picking says that we're just doing down, up all the time. Okay, this is going to be, you know, if you think about the left and right hand, right, we've got scales and chords and notes and stuff. And then we got picking or strumming, whatever you want to look at it. So essentially getting control of your picking is half of what you're going to be doing on the guitar. Pretty important, huh? 50%. So let's get that. So that's what we're going to be doing with the alternate picking, the economy picking, and, and some of the others as well. Okay, so alternate picking. Um, so we're doing this for pick control. And if you notice on this first exercise now, and if you're wondering where I'm at on this, folks, it's the PDF that's at yourguitarsage.com slash live. Go get it right now. It's really important that you're looking at this with me, okay? Go do it. All right, so you're looking at this page, right? And you're gonna see two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, and then it goes back up, two, one, two, one, and then three, two, three, two, all the way down, all the way up, and then four, three, four, three, all the way down, all the way up. We wanna use all of our fingers, okay? Some of you don't have some of these basic fretting techniques down, that's okay, because at the end of this, I'm going to literally set you up, okay? I'm gonna set you up with some stuff that's gonna blow your mind. And, and yeah, just hang in there, okay? But, so, for this first part here, we want to use all the fingers. We want to use all the fingers anyhow. And I cover this, like I say, in, in, in one of these other videos that I'm going to set you up with. So in the beginning here, we have 2-1, two, 2-1, one, 2-1. Two, one, two, one. We're going to use fingers 2-1. So here, what we're going to be doing is literally going 2-1. And I'm picking down, up for this, down, up. And then the next one, down, up, down, up down, up. Now for some of you, you're like, man, that's really, really simple. I know how to do that, Eric. That's fine. Why don't you speed it up to the point that you are having difficulty? Because here's the deal. Even though this is elementary, it's all elementary. Guitar is elementary. But if you speed it up, if you start adding some things, what have you, now all of a sudden it becomes very complex. So wherever you're at, this is why I say this is for veterans, this is for complete newbies, because as a newbie, you could be sitting here and do these exercises nice and slow, probably even slower than what I'm doing right now. Or if you're a veteran, you can speed them up and get faster at them, okay? So for that first run there of the first uh, almost two and a half measures, uh, you're going to do fingers two and one. Then where you see it turn into three, two, then you're using fingers three and two, okay? So, and this is very important because what we're doing is we're picking, alternate picking every single time, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, okay? Absolutely important that we train our minds and our brains to do this. What's also happening is you're synchronizing these two things because anybody can do this, okay? That's Anybody can do that on the guitar, but to synchronize it with the hands, that's where the issue is for everybody. It's not you, it's everybody, okay? So this will help get you in sync 
Don't worry about speed. Speed leads to, if you're thinking about speed, it leads to frustration. If you're thinking about accuracy, it leads to speed. So just try to worry about speed. Don't even worry about that. Just be concerned with speed. That's what you're trying to do, okay? So here you go. Three, two. Three, two, three, two, three, two. And you're just doing that at your speed. Everybody's going to have a different speed because they're starting with a different set of basic skills that they're coming at the guitar with, different ages. They've been doing it different times. Everybody's different. So just be your own person, okay? That's all you can be anyhow. So be that. And I say only. You're your own person. That's cool, all right? So three, two, three, two, you do that all the way up and then all the way back. And then four, three, four, three. Now this is where it gets this is where it gets fun because the pinky not only is the short guy, right, but he's also really far away from the thumb. So throughout time, our ancestors haven't used that whole that pinky a whole lot. We don't pick things up like this, we pick them up like this. So the pinky gets very lazy. So we have to train it. So that's this is where this four three comes in really handy, okay? And you're really gonna feel a little burn in your hand as you do this in the beginning, because when people what people lack for technique in the beginning, which is everybody, they try to make up with strength. And so because of that, they're white knuckling it and their hands get tired very quickly. But as your technique increases, you won't have to press as hard, meaning you'll have more stamina with your with your playing, okay? So that's, uh, that's number one, okay? The very first one, um, that's called alternate picking. And when you're doing this, look, on any of these exercises, this is what makes this whole system absolutely mind-blowing is that you could be at anywhere on guitar, okay? Now that we've officially kicked this thing off, I'm literally going to be doing this every single day along with you guys. So, because it's, this is why I developed it. I developed stuff like this for myself, but then it, it ends up going in other people's hands and now it's a thing. Now I teach guitar, it's what I do online. So, what's, what I want you to remember is take your time in this. If you're feeling frustrated, it's because you're trying to do things too quickly, that's all. If I sat, if I put a watermelon in front of you and you love watermelon, I'm like, go ahead, eat the whole thing, go. You'd be like, that's ridiculous. But for some reason in life, we think that just like guitar is just gonna come to us overnight or any other amazing thing that takes a long time and a lot of dedication. But if you're doing it in incremental, step-by-step, -step, daily type things, you get rewarded constantly Okay, just like if you're eating a yummy sandwich, take a bite, and you're like, this is yummy. If you tried to stick the whole thing in your, in your, in your trap, <laughs> it wouldn't be very fun. So step by step, it becomes fun. Same thing with guitar. And if you're doing it step by step, slow enough, you're going to absolutely dominate the instrument as well as have a blast. But if you're trying to do too much, and I know this for myself and every other guitar player I've ever taught to since the beginning of time, if you're trying to do too much, it gets frustrating, okay? So don't do that, whether it's this exercise or the next one, okay? Now, you're going to notice that, so so now, I'm going to exercise two. If you guys are wondering what PDF I'm talking about, those on YouTube, that's because you're not at yourguitarstage.com slash live and you didn't get the PDF, so do that, okay? Also, give you a chance to get in that chat room should somebody drop out, and that happens, okay? People got things to do. I understand it. All right, so you're gonna notice that both the, these exercises look very, very similar. That's because they are. We're using the same fingers on the same frets, but the only difference is we're doing a different technique. Now, someone might say, well, we just did that. And, and essentially, this would be Tuesday's exercise. Monday was the one we just did. Today would be Tuesday's exercise, the one we're doing right now. And you might say, well, we just did that, Eric. No, we didn't because I'm gonna show you a technique that we're going to be using. and. This, the whole point of this whole enchilada here is hyper-focus is going to get you to do things that you haven't done before. So what happens is if we're just left to our own device, uh, our own devices, then a lot of times we end up just practicing the same old thing. But when we hyper-focus, which means you, you're super focused on one specific area, it's what meditation's about. It's when you, you're shutting everything down, but you're just focused on a flame or silence or whatever. It's difficult to do, but when you do that, massive rewards. And the same thing is true with guitar here. So understand that when we're just focusing on one thing and it may seem tedious or boring, that's where you're going to get us a ton of, 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 of great stuff from it, okay? A ton of great uh, dexterity and the whole nine yards from it. You're really kickstarting your brain to, to learn this stuff, okay? So a pull-off is this. A pull-off is when we, when we pick a note. So in this case here, going from two to one, I'm gonna pick the second fret. Well, that was violent. Here's, 
There we go. And we're gonna pull off from two to one. Okay, so I pick the note, and then I, I pull my finger down, which is kind of doing this snapping sensation, okay? Kind of like finger picking down here, but I'm doing it with the fretting hand. Now, for those of you who are not accustomed to this, it indeed is going to be difficult for you at first. Rejoice if you just have, you're having difficulty with this because that means we found a chink in your armor. That means we found something that needs to be improved. People try to skirt around that sort of thing. Don't do that. That's exactly what you need to practice. When you find a hole in your playing, practice that. That's what you need to do to be a better player. If you keep going around it, you're going to keep having a problem. So if you're having a problem with this, awesome. That's even better because get ready. You're going to get ready to improve this, okay? So you pick two, you pull off to one. That's called a pull-off. A hammer-on is the opposite. It's when we pick a note and we, we slam our finger down. Now, this is a technique that, again, I'm going to make available for you in some videos here. After, at, at the end of the hour here, I'm going to show you how to do this, okay? Um, so if you can't do this yet, if you're just like literally just picked up the guitar, that's okay. I got you covered. Uh, for some of you, you can do this. So for this exercise, you're just doing pull-offs and you're doing two, one, two, one. Two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Okay. Now this is these exercises are great because you could be doing these while watching TV or what have you. Now in the beginning, you really want to make sure that you're very focused and that you're paying attention to what you're doing. Because if you're just doing it and you're not, you don't have the technique down yet, then that's not good. You do have to sit with it the first few times and really concentrate till you're like, okay, I get it. Then you could do it while watching TV or something like that. I'm not, I'm not prescribing uh, TV for you. I'm just saying you could if you wanted to. All right, so that's what that looks like. You can do it fast if you're a faster player, you know, or do it slow if you're a slower player or a new, newer player, okay? And then you're going to walk it back up. And then you're going to go three, two. And as far as picking, the first one you can pick down or up, it doesn't matter. What's more important here is the actual pull-off, okay? Because that's the part you're practicing here. That's the part we're focusing on, hyper-focusing on. And then you're going to go four, three. Now, I know some of you out there are saying, I don't have time for this. That's too tedious. Well, if you want to get good at the instrument, You've got to be detail-oriented, and I know you want to be good at the instrument, right? I understand some folks don't want to take the time to do that, but they're also not going to get to the levels that they want to get, and that's okay, too. We need mediocre guitar players just like we need amazing guitar players, okay? So that's okay. We need campfire folks to, to just play campfire songs. That's fine. But if you want to excel, these are the things that you want to do, okay? So... That's what you're going to do. You're going to do these hammer-ons and pull-offs. In this case here, it's all pull-offs. But later on in the program, there's hammer-ons. There's all sorts, okay? So I'm just trying to get you to understand why these are, why these are so important. The why on the hammer-ons and pull-offs, why that's so important is, number one, it's been used by everybody. I mean, all the techniques that I was using at the beginning here where I was soloing and, you know, doing all sorts of bits and pieces here, uh, these have been used by guitar players since the beginning of time. Not only that, hammer-ons and pull-offs create a lot of speed. So for instance, if I was going to play this passage like with all alternate picking, like or okay, it requires these two to be in sync more so than if I did pull-offs. Okay, so you'll get speed, you'll get different techniques. Uh, if you're picking everything, that's, that's one particular sound. If you're doing hammer-ons and pull-offs, that's another sound. It's a way to add some dimension to your playing. Okay, good. Rock and roll. We're on schedule. We're going to get ready to do three Twitter winners here at the half-hour mark. But let me tell you about economy picking very quickly here. So what's economy picking? Um, so I'll tell you a, sh a real short story here. When I was a kid, this is all I did was economy picking. I never did alternate picking. Alternate picking is that strict up and down picking no matter what you're doing. The scale doesn't matter. Moving from one string to the next is all alternate picking. Down, up, down, up, down, up, no matter what. Economy picking is the opposite. It says you do down, up, you do down 
up picking, but when you're moving from one string to the next, if it makes sense to do two downs in a row or two ups in a row because it's more economical, economical in your movement, then do that. So for instance, if you're doing strict up and down, oh, and by the way, we're looking at page three now. So for those of you uh, who have your PDF up, the one that you can find at yourguitarsage.com slash live, YouTube folks, um, do that, okay? So now I'm looking at, uh, this would be G major economy picking lesson number one, ascending. So it's ascending, it's going up. Uh, and you can see here that this is part of the third day of Wednesday, economy and sweep picking, okay? This is week one. And this is, so some of these things are simple in the beginning, but again, we're, we're establishing a concept here because if I just throw the whole thing at you, if I should throw through a whole scale at you and for this exercise, you, it would overwhelm you. You wouldn't know what to do, depending on where you're at on guitar, but 99% of you, it's going to lose you. Okay. Now, so we have to start off very simply. So, and that's good because that really gets it into our brains. And then we, we graduate from there. Okay. And that's how this whole system works. So for instance, this exercise here for Wednesday, G major economy picking lesson one, it's in that PDF, you're going to see this three, five, seven, three, okay? Three, five, seven, three. And if we were doing strict up and down, alternate picking, then we would go down, up, down, we'd go past that fifth string, and then we would actually play an up strum, an up pick. So I do it again, I'll go down, up, down, past the fifth string, and then back up. And one might say, well, that's a wasted movement because you're going down and then coming up. And indeed, it is a wasted movement. That's why folks like Yngwie Malmsteen and a lot of shredders and, and a lot of uh, guys and gals who are really fast at guitar, they've gotten really, really good at economy picking because in certain situations, you can create insane speed just from applying this concept as opposed to doing alternate picking that's a little less economical, but they both have their, they both have their needs. You don't have to know why right now. I've told you some reasons why, but later on this will make more sense. Okay. So economy picking. And if you notice uh, right above the tablature, you're going to see like a little kind of upside down U and then a V and then another upside down U and an another upside down U. Those are picking symbols. So that would mean down and then the V is up and then the next one's down and then the next one's down. So the V is coming up but the upside down U's are, are going down. That's the symbol uh, up and down uh, picking, okay? So for instance, for this first part here, you would just go down, up, down, down. Okay, so down, up, down, down. And this will mess with your mind if you're very used to alternate picking, that's good. If it, the more it messes with your mind, the better because you're breaking a habit. It means you're really established in alternate picking. This happened to me when I when I went back from uh, from alternate picking to economy because when I was just started playing, it was all economy. And then I and then someone told me, oh, Yngwie Malmsteen, he does all alternate picking. That was a lie. And I held on to that lie for decades. I had no idea that he was doing economy picking the whole time. So how about that for a lesson? I just practiced alternate picking. I threw away economy picking, thought it was crap, thought it was a, a cop out. And because of that unbelievable, ridiculous myth that I created myself, I suffered because of that. Don't be me, okay? <laughs> Don't be me. Be, be the me now, not the me that was back then, okay? So with this economy picking, you got down, up, down, up. I mean, sorry, down, up, down, down. And so some might say, well, that's not a big deal. I can, pl I can do that either way. Here's alternate, here's economy, right? But if we go, if we're doing something faster, so I'll try to do this as fast as I can, alternate picking. I'm not a fast player, but here we go. That's about as fast as I could play that alternate picking. If I was doing economy picking, if I was doing here, it would be down, up, down, down. So that's getting pretty, pretty quick there. It's, it's playing notes much faster than if we were doing strict alternate picking. So that's the reason why. Okay. Now, right now, you don't even have to think that. It's just when you get to this exercise in the program, just do it the way it is. Don't try to go 
further in it, okay? Because each week, it becomes a little bit more. If you could think about taking the heat and turning it up 52 times, there's 52 weeks in a year, then bingo, bango, jango, you're not even gonna notice that it's getting difficult. It's because it's only getting a teeny tiny bit difficult. But by the end of the year, you will be supersonic. That's how it works, okay? That's exactly why I created this like this. The other reason why this is super important, we're going to get ready to do this three uh, Twitter winners, so get ready. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, the Twitter winners, it's at yourguitarsage.com slash live. There's a little bit underneath the video there that you can cut, paste, throw it up into um, into Twitter space, and we are awarding winners those three, those, uh, three ebook bundles. Okay, so um, the other reason why sweet picking, or what we call economy picking, why it's so important is... Uh, if you've ever swept glass or anything up off the ground, you take and you just do a nice sweep like this, right? As opposed to taking each individual piece and moving it, right? That would be quite tedious, uh, both mentally and physically. So that's essentially what we're doing here. If I was gonna play an arpeggio, like if I'm going, if I'm gonna go. Well, that's a blaze of like six notes, right? Five notes. But if I tried to alternate pick that, I wouldn't be able to play it nearly that quickly. So that's what's called, it. that's another uh, economy picking, it's called sweet picking, and we cover that inside the program as well. So, and that's super easy, I mean, you'll hear David Gilmore and a bazillion other guitar players do that. That's what they're doing, okay? So. Another reason why economy picking is absolutely so amazing. Okay, we're a little bit late. Let's go into these Twitter winners. Now here, listen to me folks. Right now, if you are not at yourguitarsage.com slash live, you need to be because there's the PDF there that I keep on referring to that you need to have in order for this to make sense. There's also a chat there, and when it comes time in a half hour for me to answer your questions, that's the only chat I'm gonna be looking at because YouTube is going 10 million miles per hour because we've got thousands of folks that are logged in, I would imagine, maybe hundreds. I'm not looking at it right now, but we've got a lot of folks that are gonna be logged into this. So um, I imagine it's going so fast that I wouldn't be able to keep up with it. So that's why we had everything there. And again, I've got um, an insane offer for you today that you guys are gonna lose your mind over. We've never done something like this before. So it's coming up uh, at, the, at the end of the March. So let's do those three Twitter winners. And that's the other reason is that um, there's a little bit underneath the video there. You'd cut and paste, send that it, send that into Twitter space, and then we do winners, okay? So these winners, um, Chris is gonna help me out with that. We're gonna do those three right now. And these are for folks that uh, are winning the ebook bundle. So um, Chris, who's our first Twitter winner? And I'm gonna hopefully be able to read these. Oh good, I can, thank you, Chris. That's beautiful, I can see that. Um, like Kilroy here, hi. Uh, so Matthew FP, thank you, sir, for, and see, see what he did there? He just cut and pasted that. That's straight from the website. Why are we doing that? Why, why am I making you jump through hoops? Well, I'm not. I just want other folks to know about what we're doing. That's the whole point here is that we're helping a lot of folks play guitar, uh, giving a lot of stuff away, and I'd like to do that for more people. It's just a fun thing to do. Uh, Brandon Corley, yeah, Brandon, rock. This is the ebook bundle that you'll find at yourguitarsage.com yourguitarsage.com, okay? And Pitbull. Pitbull, man, I love your music. Man, I tell you, at Tony Robbins. God, that's great, watching my, my broadcast today. Uh, sorry, dad joke. That's what my wife would say, dad joke right there. Okay, maybe so. Um, all right, so there you go. Let's, let's dig into the lesson. Thank you so much, Chris. So now um, we're going to the fourth exercise here, okay? Uh, you, this is on, at the PDF, yourguitarstage.com slash live, folks that are on YouTube that are not downloading that yet. Do it. I, I swear to God, I know there's people there going, where's the PDF? I'm telling you where it's at. All right, so here we go. So listen to this. Um, stretch and reach. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Stretch and reach. We're not really stretching out our hands. We're increasing our reach. Now, why is that? It's because now... Let me ask you this, and I'm talking to you specifically. You feel your hand is too small? Mm-hmm, yeah, I'm in your head, aren't I? No, I'm not in your head. It's just that I've taught literally thousands of one-on-one -on -one lessons. Obviously, a few YouTube views, I think 60 or 70 million of them, and there's a lot of comments, and folks are always saying, hey, I can't do this, my hand's too small. Well, guess what? 
the thousands of one-on-one -on -one lessons that I've taught and the millions of folks on YouTube, but so many of the, of the, the comments, uh, I've never once seen anybody who's had a hand that was big, that, w that they had some sort of advantage on the guitar, and I've never seen one with a small hand where they had a disadvantage. I know it's hard to believe because you're looking at your hand that you think is small and you're like, but I'm having difficulty. Well, the guy with the giant hand is having the same exact difficulty. It's not you. It's the guitar. It's not like a piano that you just come up and start pecking away. It's, it's, there's more technique that's involved in it. But once you understand the bits and pieces, you can slay it, okay? I know it because I've only seen it happen a few thousand times. Right, so, so trust me when I say this, okay? Um, Anybody, have you guys ever heard of Spud Webb, right? Spud Webb was this uh, five foot seven NBA basketball player, I think in the 90s, I think it was. Spud Webb is my height, okay? I'm not a tall guy, all right? I'm not a tall guy. So Spud Webb, but I got big hands. No, I'm joking. Um, Spud Webb was this guy, he's five foot seven, and, uh, and he won the slam dunk championship uh, in the 90s, it was some, you know, these NBA players, they have these slam dunk championships where they get out there and they show off and literally they're just, it's all slam dunks, right? There's no game going on. Spud Webb, five foot seven beat, and I forgot who it was, but this super tall player uh, just totally annihilated him. He was doing 360s and helicopters and all sorts of stuff. So what's the moral of the story? He was five foot seven. He had a 42 inch vertical. What does that mean? Well, that means that it has nothing to do with height. Okay, because there are guys that were six and a half, seven foot tall that weren't doing what he was doing. It has to do with heart. It has to do with mind. It has to do with, I'm going to do this no matter what. And that's not motivation. Look it up. Spud Webb, look him up. Okay. And there's a million other examples that I could use. But bottom line, the reason that you think your hand is too small is because you haven't, what happens when we're stretching our fingers, it puts our hand in a totally different position. If we don't understand that and don't understand that we have to practice it with it spread out like that in these different kind of awkward poses, it's kind of like doing yoga when you put your arm in some weird position or your leg or something and it's not like there's a weight on it, but you're like, dear Lord, what's happening? That's crazy. It's similar, okay? It's because you're, 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 Leverage is not on your side. If you're playing like this, where your thumb's over the top of the neck and you can really grip the, the guitar, you've got all this leverage, right? But when you take that thumb and you drop it in the back of the neck and now your hand's out front and you're stretching and all this other stuff, you don't have the same leverage. So we have to practice that way. We have to understand that. That's what these stretch reach exercises are all about, okay? So it's not your hand. It's just that you just don't have the technique down, okay? So for this first exercise that you're looking on the PDF here, you're going to see that your first finger, we're starting off with the first finger. Now you can see, you see their stretch to finger one and two. It tells you what fingers to use. We're using fingers one and two and you're having it at the 12th fret on the second string, the 13th fret of the first string. And essentially this is what we're doing. We're going and then you're moving your first finger down. You're going to feel a stretch there. It's going to seem difficult. I want you to not press hard. I just want you to think, okay, just stretch my finger out here just a little bit. You may have to physically do it. That's fine too. But I promise you, if you're having difficulty with this, which 99% of you will be, that's good news. That means we need to work on that area. And that's exactly what this daily, or I should say weekly exercise is going to do. And you're not going to have to look at it daily. You have to look at it weekly on this on these exercises. Um, you got one for each day, but here you go. This is the stretch and reach. So you'll come back to it the following week, and it'll be just a teeny tiny bit harder. So essentially, what we're doing is we're doing this two one, and then that finger comes down. This doesn't have to be musical. The whole point of it is that we just are getting the notes out, and we're doing the stretch. Now, if you notice that it's a little bit more difficult as you're going down, that's because the frets are spread now. So in the beginning, you may only be able to do this over three or four frets. That's okay, because guess what? The following time you come to it, you'll be able to do it just a little bit further and a little bit further and a little bit further. Any of you who have been to school or done anything whatsoever that required a lot of attention and doing things daily, yoga or your job or anything where you didn't know it all in the beginning, that's everything, you know, by the way. Uh, if, you know, if, you, if you've ever done something like that, which you all have, you'll notice that daily practice on something will make you amazing 
Okay, so that's what this exercise is gonna do, stretch and reach. And uh, so in the beginning, you may not be able to do it very far, and then eventually it's going to get better, it's gonna get easier, um, you're gonna rock it, okay? Rocks out, socks out, okay? So, that's what we're doing there. All right, let's, um, and we're gonna, you're gonna go all the way to the end if you can, uh, but go as far as you can. Um, on this, I have it just going down to four, six, but if you can keep going, then keep going all the way to the end, okay? Again, there's nobody, there's, yeah, I think there's probably thousands of people watching right now. Again, I'm not looking at the number, but let's say there's only hundreds of people watching. Doesn't matter. Every single body is different. Everybody's individual. Don't compare yourself to other people. Unless you're looking at somebody who's better and you're like, that's cool. I'd like to be like that. But don't be like, I've got to be like that. Unless you're willing to do the practice. Because if you're not, that's a really, that's, a, that's an upset. If you're like, you really want that so bad. And then you're not willing to put in the work. If you're willing to put in the work, then have that person drive you. Yeah, I'm going to be like that guy. I'm going to be like that girl. Okay. Otherwise, don't because that's very frustrating. Uh, so, but everybody's in their own place. Take your time with this. You're going to slay it step by step over time. That's how every great player since the beginning of time has gotten good. I don't care who it is. I still see people posting on that one video that I have where it's like, uh, uh, talent versus practice, and everybody's like, "Yeah, but you can't look at it. you can't look at Jimi Hendrix or somebody like that and tell me they weren't born with that." Nope, they sure weren't, because they didn't come out of the womb playing. You never heard of Jimi Hendrix at nine years old. You didn't hear of him at eight years old. You didn't hear of him at five years old, right? You heard him after he practiced, after he'd gotten really good. But he was so passionate about it that he was willing to put in the work. That's all it is, my friends. Okay, that's the only difference between you and Hendrix is that he is willing to put in the work, or you. You may be. You may be better than Hendrix. Okay. Um, anyhow, let's go. I, I digress. Okay, so the next one is scales and sequences. So this is another key practice focus area. Um, it's our next one on our PDF. It's Friday. It's the fifth day, Friday, A minor and C major pentatonic form one. So for those um, that don't know what I'm talking about, it's the PDF that I'm giving you for free. You should be looking at it. It's at yourguitarsage.com slash live. The link for it's in the description of the video uh, on YouTube. You should be there. You should be looking at this with me. It's going to help immensely. So, you know, what I, uh, w the scales and sequence is this. Why? Why are we doing this, Eric? Well, uh, it's, it's, you know, ultimately, we're all doing this for the music, right? We're doing this to express ourselves. One doesn't paint a painting or sculpt a sculpture or write a song because it's very similar to accounting. We do accounting because it has to be done. Okay, it's not really an art form. It's something that we got to get done. It's not to say that some don't love it. That's great. We need that, right? But it's not art like these other things are art. Okay, because it's coming from your soul. And ultimately, that's what we want to do with music. All this technique, all of this, you know, stuff is great. Remember, there's two parts to, to art, right? Yeah, there's technique, and then there's the soul, right? When we bring those two together, it's one thing to have someone just totally sing from their soul, and they're like, and I always love you. They could be singing from their heart, but the technique is, is, is insane, right? And then terrible. And then you can have somebody else who has all the great technique in the world, but they've got no soul. I've heard players like this, you know, where they're like so fast, so technical, so great, but there's no soul there. And you're like, sorry, man, it's not doing it for me. So, but when you combine those two, oh man, it's magic. Okay, so very important. So this is what this section's about. These sales, scales and sequences essentially are making, it's kind of bringing you into the music a little bit more because scales are sequences of notes, if you will, that are going to sound more harmonious. And what I mean by sequences is taking scales and doing them in such a way that they become even more melodic. So for instance, a, you know, if I was playing a scale like this, or if I was playing it like this, that sort of thing, or there you go, 
yeah, right? So that, uh, that idea, we're just doing sequences, okay? And so it's important, I'm kind of bringing you into this, that's what we're gonna be doing on Friday, is, is we're gonna be looking at sequences. So it's taking scales and, and what have you. And so it's important because, number one, it sounds uh, really cool. It will help you master the fretboard. Um, what other reasons? It's because it's techniques that every guitar player has used since the beginning of time. And, right, so that's why we're doing it. So uh, we're looking at the pentatonic form right now, and I'm a little bit behind, but that's okay. I'll catch up, I promise you. Okay, so A minor uh, and C major pentatonic. You don't have to know the theory behind that, but these two scales could work for either one of those keys, okay? Uh, for every major key, there's a related minor. For every minor, there's a related major. I have videos for that. I'm gonna be, again, this offer that we're doing at the end here, It's you're gonna be privy to all of this. You're gonna be privy to We've never done something like this, so get ready for it. All right, so here you go. So um, so what we're doing here is we're starting on the low string here because we're looking at that tablature. It's the lowest line, right? There's six lines there, six strings. It's the very lowest string. And so we're going to go the lowest string in pitch. And it says 5-8, five, 5-7, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five, eight. So that is the A minor pentatonic scale. It goes like this. 5 8 Five seven five seven five seven five eight five eight, and then we're gonna go back. Okay, now you don't have to do this right now. I'm not really wanting you to do this right now. I'm wanting you to understand the concept so that you can do this later. Because some of you are just like, literally just got the guitar right now, or some of you don't even have a guitar. Some of you have been playing for decades. So everybody's in a different place. I've got to speak to you as if that's the case, right? So. Um, so because of that, what I want you to do is I want you to take this after we're done and do this. And, you know, if you, if, here we are on the fifth fret, we're using our first finger. If the eight is four frets away, right, then you're going to use your pinky. You know, don't try not to use that third finger because we're really trying to exercise the pinky. So, uh, and as far as the picking, you can do alternate picking, you can do hammer-ons, you can do pull-offs, you can do all that stuff, or you can do, do all down picks. Because the point of this is really to get these patterns into your brain because we're going to be using them as we become more musical. Um, in fact, this form here uh, is, I was using that 99% of the notes that I just did at the beginning of the broadcast when I was playing that little bit of solo thing over the reggae thing and I did the, the Stairway to Heaven thing and what have you, 99% of that is pentatonic, it's that one form. So if you know that, you can noodle and do the same thing. It's like you got these little paints to work with and you're kind of painting and creating your own thing, okay? <laughs> Lots of videos for you on that and on teach, how to teach you how to do that. Okay, we gotta keep moving. Uh, polyphony, polyphony, poly, meaning many, uh, phony, meaning <laughs> You're a freaking liar. Uh, no, phony means uh, voices. So many voices, uh, like in my head. Uh, or no, po polyphony really means many voices. So on the guitar, we're talking more than one voice. So two voices is fine. Three voices, four, five, six, that sort of thing. Okay, so that's really the only thing we're talking about here. And, um, you know, why are we doing this? Well, technically, it sounds really cool. Um, it's used again by all the greats. It will help you master the fretboard in ways that you that you that you're going to be using association. So from one note to another note, as opposed to just knowing the one note at a time, like we got on these scales, right? That's great. We need to know that. But then, how does the one note relate to the other note? And that is where some magic happens. It'll help you understand the fretboard more, especially like when we're doing things like uh, octaves. <laughs> You know, knowing those different places, that, those were A's, by the way. Knowing that, I know, always know where the A's are at, or I know where the G's are at. I know where the G's are at at all times, or the F's. You know, and that's just, um, obviously, that just, I, I didn't come out of the womb like that. I practiced things like this, and that, so that's how you're going to do this. Is you're, that's how you're going to get really good at this, okay? So... Um, right now, we're going to be looking at, for folks uh, that don't have it already, make sure you download the, the PDF. I'll say it again, yourguitarsage.com slash live. Go there, download this PDF. We are on six, day six, Saturday. This is called Movable Diatonic Octaves on Strings 3 and 1, Key of G. Woo, that's a mouthful. So, movable, meaning these are this form is movable. Diatonic, meaning it's related to the major scale. It's on strings 3 and 1. That means... 
yeah, it's on strings three and one, and it's in the key of G. It means it's in the key of G, okay? You don't have to know all that stuff. Just understand that that's the name of it, okay? And look at the tablature now. You're going to see uh, strings one and three. Uh-oh, where's string two? We're not using it. Nope, we're not. I'm not using it at all. So we're going to use a technique of muting. And again, the, you don't have to know how to do this. Okay, you don't know how to do. You don't have to know how to do this because I'm literally going to. I, I, I've got all the videos that you need to understand this stuff. But I'm going to show it to you right now. Okay, anyhow. Okay, so for instance, uh, for this zero three, what we're going to do is we're going to pick all three strings, three, two, and one. It would be too difficult to just pick those two unless we were doing some sort of hybrid picking, like picking the the, the third string with our pick and the the first string with our with our pinky uh, with our finger. You know, it's called hybrid picking or chicken picking. But we can do that. But the other way to do it is to actually mute that second string, and that's just by bumping your finger into that second string. Okay, so if in order for me to play this, I'd do zero three, five two, four seven. Now here, what I'm doing is I'm just fingering the, the third and first strings, and I'm muting that second string with my first finger. So this way, and I can just play that scale in octaves, just straight up. Now again, here's the deal. If you're having difficulty with it on any of these, that is what we're looking for. So if you're having difficulty with it, you're like, well, I can't do these. I'm having difficulty with them. Well, guess what? That's exactly what we're looking for. If you just could do it, then you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't need it. I wouldn't need it, right? I need these practices. This is, this is not like riding a bike, friends. You've got to practice your guitar consistently. It's not, when you get on a bike, you can ride it, come back to it 10 years later, you can ride the bike still. But it's, this is different because guitar is not like that. You gotta keep up with it, okay? So if you're having difficulty with it, that's good. We're looking for that so that we can fix these things, okay? So the, the worse you are at it, the better the news is because you're gonna make a, a quantum leap as opposed to those that have been playing for 10, 20, 30 years who come to these exercises. They're gonna get some out of it for sure, but not like the newbies are, not like the, the folks that are, the, the intermediates are, okay? It's just, that's the way it works. I promise you, and I'm sorry about that for those that have been playing for a long time. You're definitely going to get something out of it. I've been playing for nearly, coming up on nearly 40 years, uh, and, I'm get, and I get massive results out of this stuff. That's why I created this, but especially newbies, especially intermedi intermediates, you're going to be slaying it, okay? All right, so this is uh, polyphony, and uh, the stuff that I cover in, in polyphony is like double stops, octaves, uh, chordal, so that'd be like part of chords or full chords or what have you. Um, and when you're done through that series of doing that, it's 52 weeks of, of that on Saturdays. That's what you're going to be doing. Every Saturday when you visit this, you can, you're can you going to be visiting this module, and, uh, and it's going to help you to understand the fretboard. So it's not just technique, but we're going to be bringing these concepts together of harmonization, octaves, double stops, chords, that sort of thing, and you're going to be like, what in heaven's name Eric brainwashed me to be the best amazing guitar player in the world? How did he do that? And you're going to be writing me letters and sending me teddy bears and all sorts of weird stuff, okay? And that's okay. Um, all right, let's keep going. Um, so uh, let's get to the, the last one, okay? We're, this is day seven, Sunday, okay? And friends, guess what? You can find this in the PDF that's at yourguitarsage.com slash live in case, you did, in case you didn't hear it the first six times. Um, okay, so finger picking. Why finger picking? Well, again, all the greats finger pick. Um, not everybody, but it, it's, it's, it's an important thing for us to do is to finger pick because it adds a new dimension to what we're doing. Right? It adds this, this holy beautiful sound to, to things, right? So finger picking is really, really cool. It adds a new dimension to what you're doing. So many greats, so many amazing songs have been done with it. Uh, and it's really not that difficult, okay? Let me teach you how it, how it goes really quickly. This is like 30 seconds to finger picking, okay? 30 seconds to Mars. Is it 30 seconds to Mars? 10 seconds? I don't know. Here we go. So here's the deal. Watch this. Thumb takes care of strings six, five, and four. Super easy. Thumb takes care of strings six, five, and four. We call that the P, okay? 
P-M-I-A. That's P I P I M A. Okay, you can think about it like pick or plectrum. You could think that as your thumb. A lot of people use their thumb in the beginning uh, as their pick. Uh, index, I for index. M for middle. Well, oh, someone's going to screen capture that and send it all over the internet. Um, <laughs> M for middle, right? And A for annular, or uh, you can think about it like anniversary, like you wear your ring finger on there, okay? I think these are Spanish names. Uh, pulgar, indice. Uh, medio or median or something like that in angular and something like that. But uh, a few different languages adopt this. So, but, but we can do it with English too. So pick, middle, index, and anniversary or ring finger. Okay. So, you know, you don't have to know that, but I do go into those details inside the, inside the program. Okay. So essentially we can just use the tablature and notice that we have a bunch of zeros. So we're not doing anything here. Okay. We're not, we're not, fretting anything. We're literally just finger picking. And I do that purposely because I want you to just concentrate on the finger picking hand. Okay. We're getting ready to do those winners in, in three minutes here. I'm going to try to pat, I'm going to try to do it right on the hour. Okay. So here we go in three minutes. Um, so basically we have, we just have zeros. We're just doing open strings here and you can see the sequence, right? It's going to go like this. It's going to go thumb, whoops, thumb, middle, index, annular, okay? P, M, I, A, or strings six, two, three, one. That's all you're doing, literally. Now here's the sequence. You're gonna go, you're gonna do this so slow. I don't care how slow you do it, it's up to you. Do it as slow as it takes for you to, to just feel good about it and con conceptualize it, okay? This isn't about speed. If you're concentrating on speed, you're gonna get frustrated. If you're, if, you're, if you're concentrating on accuracy, you're gonna get speed. It happens automatically. If you're looking at it, it's like the watched pot, okay? If you're looking at accuracy, you're gonna get speed. So just be concerned with accuracy. So again, it's gonna go, Six, two, three, one, those strings. And technically what you want to do is nice and slow. If you're resting your pinky, that's okay too, but you know, uh, it would be, it's better if you're floating a little bit for the most part, but there's nothing wrong. If you want to rest your pinky there, that's okay. Uh, banjo players do it all the time, okay? And there's nothing wrong with doing that. That's what we're looking for, okay? Now for some of you, you're gonna get faster and faster at it, okay? Uh, so whatever your speed is, is what your speed is, okay? It's not a competition. You know, unless you, you know, compete with yourself, try to get better uh, for yourself. Sorry, I'm tuning this up here while we're, while we're chatting amongst ourselves. Um, it, there's nothing wrong with competing with yourself. I do it every day. I say, well, how fast am I at this? How many weights can I lift? What can I do? How many uh, folks can I teach guitar? How many folks can we get in the program? I compete with myself all the time. Uh, so nothing wrong with doing that. That's in fact, that's good. But, um, it's not really a, a healthy thing so much to just compare yourself to people all the time. Unless they're a, if they're an inspiration to you, that's great, but not competing. Inspiration, okay? If you're running a race, that's one thing, but inspiration, because if you're, if you're just competing with them, it's the wrong spirit, and uh, you're not gonna get what you want. You're gonna be frustrated because you're gonna be behind, okay? Okay, so focus on you, focus on getting better. Friends, we're going to do some giveaways. Are you ready? My gosh, we're getting ready to give away $4,000 worth of amazing things, uh, folks. Um, so, oh, and you'll see at the end of this PDF too, um, you know, there's a little bit of encouragement there. So, um, so make sure that you download that and make sure that you look at that after this whole thing is done. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to be actually what I'm doing right now for folks that are, um, and that chat is full right now, but for those that are on YouTube, if you're trying to get in, you can literally go to yourguitarstage.com slash live right now and wait. And if you see somebody drop out, someone's like, I gotta go pee or I'm gonna go get a sandwich, then bam, uh, you can jump in and, and get in there and you can ask a question because I'm getting ready to do questions. All right. You ready to do this? Good. Here we go. Um, so. 
What we're doing now is we're, we're doing three Twitter winners. These are folks that have cut and pasted that little bit that's underneath the chat at that site. And, um, or where is it? It's somewhere on there. Yeah, nonetheless. Um, and then we're doing seven Unstoppable Guitar System giveaways, and we're doing the one Fender Stratocaster with the Unstoppable Guitar System. Okay, here we go. Uh, Chris, you ready? Woohoo! Chris is ready. We're gonna do this three Twitter winners, and here we go. Bill uh, Beaver, it is, and these folks are for the ebook bundles, okay? That you'll find at yourguitarsage.com. Yeah. Uh, Sonia R. Congratulations, my friends. And by the way, everybody who has tweeted uh, regarding this, thank you so much for that because that just means more people can come into the program and that's really cool of you. So thank you so much. And I think this is, uh, if I'm reading it right, uh, Lana Flagby. It's kind of difficult to, to read from here, but um, nonetheless, congratulations, my friends. Very nice. Okay. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for that. All right. Let's get into the Unstoppable Guitar System winners, my friends. The Unstoppable Guitar System is my massive program that, that I've, I mean, we've been doing this for years now, and it's a massive program. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to go into the, the bits and details uh, to tell you about it, because you guys should know about it by now, but if you don't, it's massive. It's gigantic, okay? And we've sold it for 400 bucks since the beginning of time, uh, and we're getting ready to give uh, eight of those away right now. One of those winners is going to win the Strat. Here we go. All right, so, and here's how it works. Uh, look, Nick Jonas has, because um, of his guitar solo, he, he's, he's going to join the program. Nicholas, congratulations. And we, we bleep out that end there, obviously, so people aren't, like, going out and creating their own email address that looks similar to that. Okay. Uh, Shreyans Kedia, we will reach out to you, by the way, my friends. Hopefully you're watching. You don't need to reach out to us. I've got a crew of, of ninjas getting ready to get in touch with you so that we can get you set up and all that good stuff. Daryl, congratulations, my friend. HD 7675. This is, uh, this is amazing. So you guys will literally have lifetime unlimited memberships to the Unstoppable Guitar System, the system that keeps growing, nearly 600 videos, 600 jam tracks, and it keeps growing, okay? Uh, Darlene Docina, congratulations, my friend. That is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're coming up to it. Get ready. Oh, can you feel the excitement? Joey Garino, Jag Hockey 7. I don't know what that means but it's pretty cool, Jag Hockey. Um, okay, get ready, get ready. We're coming up on, we're coming up on it. Raymond Scarborough, my friend. R Scarborough 231 at blankety blankety blank. And um, is, this, is this the guitar winner? No. No, this is, okay. So Ethan Roulette, my friend, you are our one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh winner. And here, my friends, the winner of the Candy Apple Red 1985 Fender Stratocaster from George Groon with the locking treble system is, who is it? Warren Hunt, Jock7983 at blankety blank. He's jumping around like a madman right now at home. Um, he's got to go change his shorts. That's okay, because you just want a guitar, my friend. And a lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System, like way over $1,000 worth of awesome stuff. Now, my friends, listen really quickly before you go. I told you that I was going to, so if you did not win today, that's okay. We do these all the time, but listen very quickly because I have something even better than, the, than, than what we just gave away there. Listen, I said it at the beginning of the program, and I'm going to ask you again very quickly because I have something amazing for you. If... You find yourself, let me ask you, do you find yourself picking up the guitar and you, you wonder what you're going to play? And you're just like, I don't know what to play today or I'm stuck and I'm not moving forward. I'm frustrated. This is like 99% of us, right? If we don't have a daily regimen to do this or if having a daily step-by-step -step regimen to do this would be helpful, would that be helpful? If you said yes to either of these, my friends, you're in the right place and I've got an insane offer for you today. This is what we're doing. We've we're literally kicking off the 365 guitar plan today. Been building it for well over a year. And literally for $1, you get unlimited access to the Unstoppable Guitar System for 30 days. Okay? Literally, no strings attached. 30 days, $1, you get 
unlimited access to the entire 365. There's well over 365 uh, lessons in there because uh, th there's other stuff that I have included in there that are supplementary. Now, I know that's insane because this is normally an $80 product, right? Here you go. It's going to get insaner. Is I'm also giving you access to the entire unstoppable guitar system, unlimited access for 30 days. What? I didn't hear you right. I'm going to say it again. Literally, it's the $80 product. It's the, the entire unstoppable guitar system. You guys know what that is, right? Um, you're getting both of those for, I'm feeling a little weepy. You're getting both of those, seriously, for 30 days for $1. Okay, now here's how it works. At the 30-day mark, Okay, if you're like, I don't want this, I'm learning too much, I'm an insane guitar player now, I rule the earth and I don't want to be in here anymore, then that's okay. You've only spent $1. You get out of there. If you continue on with the program, it's the normal subscription membership that will monthly that will occur monthly okay we have a few different ways that you can do this but just check it out check the link out because honestly um there's there's so much to say about it that i would be talking for a long time and i really want to get to your questions okay so um on the 30th day yeah the subscription would continue uh the link for that is where is the link for that the link for that is in the video uh and it's also on this page you'll see it right here uh, the get started today it's right at the bottom there you'll see like a kind of brownish button get started today one dollar click here you can do it while we are in here you see ken you see all sorts of folks uh right now talking about uh the unstoppable guitar system they're 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 in there and they love it so there you go. Pretty awesome stuff. Um, so make sure you uh, make sure you click on that link. Let's get into some questions, my friends. And really quickly, uh, for those that are that are at YouTube, we've got literally we got a few seats open in the chat area, and I'm getting ready to answer questions. So listen to me. I want to answer your questions on YouTube. I really, really, really do. But I'm not looking at that screen right now. I'm looking at this one chat because I know the other one's flying. This one's flying, but the other one's definitely flying. So come to yourguitarstage.com slash live. Let me get to your questions right now. We're going to get to it. And uh, and for those that want to take advantage of the offer, literally, you're going to spend $1. I don't know anything that's $1 anymore, by the way. There's nothing. Not even gum. So for $1, you're getting unlimited access to the entire 365 program and unlimited access to the Unstoppable Guitar System program. Unlimited for 30 days, okay? If at the end of the 30 days, you still don't want to be there, you tell us, no questions to ask, you're out of there, you spend a dollar. That's it. Uh, otherwise, you can continue on with the program. That's it, okay? Bingo, bingo. All right, friends, let's get into it. We're going to get into some questions. Uh, Rudrish is saying al alternative, uh, alternative picking. Yeah, alternate picking. That's what we're doing on day one. It's strict down up picking, just straight down up picking. That's it, okay? Um, all right, good, good. Hey, Eric, I uh, really have a difficulty on solos. Any tips to make songs, uh, to make notes sound like solos? Nation Z is saying, yes, indeed. Uh, so inside, so, you know, one or two things that I have inside the unstoppable guitar system is minimalistic blues and uh, call and response. What this is, is it's basically hand holding you like I like when you would teach a child how to speak, when you say, say this word, say this word, pronounce it again, pronounce it again, that sort of thing. And I'm basically teaching you how to phrase, how to think about solos. I mean, how to think about scales and to create solos out of them. Because solo, because scales are really just, well, this is the, these are our options. This is where we can go on the fretboard, right? But it doesn't tell us what to play. You know, it's just basically like the canvas, the paints and the paintbrush and then go. It's not really, we're not doing anything. We just had, those are our options. But here I'm actually taking your hand with the brush, putting it on the canvas and saying, okay, let's do a circle now. Okay, now see, here's the head and da 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 That's what the call and response part is and the minimalistic blues is in the program. So if you want to do that, that's what, I mean, one buck will literally uh, get you in there, okay? So to where you can get all of that. I could tell you some, you know, like little thing that, is not going to carry you that far, but like to watch that series is going to rocket fuel you into understanding how to phrase and to and to, to create solos. Okay, so that's what you want to do, my friend. All right, great, great. Okay, and I'm looking, uh, I'm looking for questions. Oh, whoops. 
Just hang in there. Hang in there. Hang in there with me. All right. Uh, you mentioned PDF shows which fingers to use. I only see the string and the fret number. Mike is saying. Okay. So, Mike, um, you'll notice at the top, it'll say, like, for instance, um, here, I'm going to pull it up right now. Okay. So, for instance, um, and we're looking at that PDF right now. It says two fingers, two ones, three twos, and four threes. You're going to use those fingers. Okay, so just like the frets, you're going to use those fingers. Same thing with the pull-offs on, on day two. You'd use those fingers. If it says four, three, yeah, you're playing it with frets four and three, but you're also using fingers four and three. Uh, as far as economy picking, uh, you can do these, you know, however you want. But I mean, I definitely have a protocol and I cover that inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. And I'm literally like saying here, take take everything that I've got for a dollar. Um, and that's going to show you. There's a video in there that says, that explains that, right? So there is some logic to it. And then uh, with the finger stretch, which says stretch two finger, one and two, you'll use fingers one and two. You could use fingers two and three and three and four as well if you wanted to. That's the great thing about this is that, again, if you're a newbie, you'll just use fingers one and two. If you're an intermediate, you could use three and four, you could use second and third or start getting into three and four. Advanced, you'd use three and four because your first and second finger, you've got those down, right? Um, that sort of thing. Does that make sense? Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. All right, I'm seeing the chat go nuts over at, at YouTube, uh, and we've got room over at yourguitarstage.com slash live. So, uh, but I'm not looking at the YouTube one. I'm back over here, okay? Um, should we move these exercises up chromatically after each run or stay in the shown area? That's the thing about this, Drew, is this is really made to spark you. You can't mess up. You're not going to be like, oh, crap, I moved it up the fretboard. He didn't tell me to do that or he didn't tell me, I wonder what I should do. Either way, you're going to be good because you're moving your fingers and you're doing it in a, in a focused way, a hyper-focused way. Okay, where it wouldn't be good is if you just didn't tr even try the exercise. Uh, and then maybe the, the, the extreme of that is if you practiced it for, for 12 hours a day and you weren't working on songs or something like that. Those are the extremes. Anything in between there was fine. But yeah, moving it up chromatically would be great. That's fantastic. Uh, and some of them you'll see, you'll see that, I'll, that I actually say that, you know. Uh, okay, what was the pattern for economy picking? Caleb, it's in the PDF. Download the PDF, yourguitarstage.com slash live. That will help you. Uh, but it's down, up, down, down, if you're talking about the picking part. And you'll see the little thing there, right? That's on every single, so here's the deal. Inside the 365, which again, $1 today, 30 days, you also get the entire Unstoppable Guitar System for 30 days uh, for one buck. But here's the deal, for each lesson. Basically, I have it broken up into these seven focus areas, and we do this for 52 weeks. So the first week is not going to be as hard as the second week, and the second week is not going to be as hard as the third week, and it just slowly graduates. If you can imagine going to your stove and turning it up 52 different times, you'd be like, well, geez, I'm hardly even moving the knob. That's what it's going to feel like when you're progressing in this, is you're going to, you're going to start seeing massive results right away because you're practicing. But the severity or the how how much it's increasing in, in complexity is not going to seem hard at all because we're just bumping up a little bit, okay? But your speed's going to be increasing. And that's where you're that's where you're going to be able to to feel like you're right in the right place at all times because you're going to be doing these exercises and then next week it's going to be a little bit more complex, but you're going to you're going to be able to practice these at your own speed and you're going to try to get it to the speed that is challenging to you. Okay? Does that make sense? Um, and with each one of those videos where I'm showing you, okay, here's the exercise, then there's also a PDF right there that'll show you exactly what to do. And I, if, for those folks that, that like the interactive tablatures where you can play them, change the key, do all that kind of stuff, um, you're gonna see a Guitar Pro file that you can use like in Tux Guitar, Guitar Pro, or a lot of other tab uh, programs, okay? So um, you have all that. You've got, the, you've got the video, you've got the comments, you've got the PDF, and you've got the Guitar Pro file that for each one of these exercises. So it's it's a, it's the amount of information that you're going to be getting just from one of these lessons is is huge. Okay, Eric, I know you studied classical 
style, will your lessons on call and response and minimalistic blues work to learn how to play in that style? Phrasing, articulate notes, take a, take a song and make it sing. Uh, T. Memphis is saying, uh, will your lessons in call and response and minimalistic work to learn how to play in that style? No. You know, classical is its own duck. And even though, you know, music is music. And so, you know, with you have, you know, some degree of call and response in classical music. It's not called call and response, but it's called theme and variation, right? Like that's theme and variation where you take a very simple melody and then you, you make it complex. Um, so in the same way, we're, we're going down, we're using the same neurons, the ne same neurons are firing and we're developing the same parts of our brain in order to do that. So indeed it will help with that. But call and response is kind of, a, it's kind of a blues thing. You know, it's like, you know. Uh, and you might have. That would be a call and then the response. It's something similar like, hey man, what are you doing? Not much, what are you doing? Type of thing. That's what call and response is. I know, I'm a weirdo. That's fine. <laughs> All right. All right, great, 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 great. What about timing? Joe is saying, uh, what about timing? Timing is absolutely important, Joe. And uh, I've had this question before, especially about the program. They're like, well, what about rhythm? Listen, that's what the that's exactly what the interactive tabs are for. That's exactly what the PDF is for, where you have the notation the whole time. You've got the musical notation, okay? So timing is absolutely important. And if you're practicing these, then you're going to be working on your timing. These, th this isn't random. You're not to practice the exercise like this. <laughs> You're supposed to practice them smoothly, just like the exercise says. And with each one of them, I actually have an example, a video with where you can hear how, exactly how it's supposed to sound. So, so even if you don't read any of it, you will actually hear what it is that you're supposed to be doing. Okay, does that make sense? You'll be able to hear it. You'll be able to visually see it. You're gonna have the PDF. You're gonna have the guitar profile. Any way that you wanna do it, you've got it right there. Or if you read music, boom. Or if you read tablature, boom. You've got it all right there as an example. So timing, super important. This is massively going to help with your timing, especially if you're using it, um, if you're using it with a metronome or something like that. You don't have to do that, but FYI, you know. Rudrish is saying how to play clean leads. Rudrish, right here, this is it. It's practice. It's practice on all these bits and pieces. But it's hyper focused. So, you know, so like if it's, uh, if you're, you know, how to play clean leads is a very general subject. So if your hammer ons and pull offs are weak, but everything else is good, your picking's good, well, then you need to work on the hammer ons and pull offs like we do in day two. If your alternate picking is sucks, well, then day one's really gonna help you. You know, if you're doing a lot of finger picking, right, like I did the, the Sultans of Swing solo for this thing or any of these other uh, bits where I'm doing finger picking, it's like, well, then that finger picking section is really going to help for you. But clean leads, that's a real general idea. So, you know, for hyper focusing in these areas, you're going to see, you're going to start uncovering all the bits and pieces that you're like, that's why I'm having a problem. Uh, okay, that makes sense. So I'm actually a pretty fast player, but it's just I'm having difficulty with that one passage or that one style of, of, uh, of riffing. You know, does that make sense? All right, great, 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 great. Yes, uh, so someone's saying, uh, will there be an option to select only 365 plan, uh, you know, other than subscribe to UGS? Actually, I'm gonna have Jason answer that because he's he, he, he knows that back end better. But yeah, I mean, obviously. That. What's that? You already can do that. You already can do that. Yeah, Chris is saying. Yeah, definitely. Um, this is my Herba Mate, and I've got to have some. This is my caffeine, so. Kick it into high gear here. Um, so yeah, you definitely can do that. You're not, you don't have, you don't have to have the unstoppable guitar system if you do not want. Okay. Jason just posted that, um, that link, you know? Okay. Do you need effects to play a pentatonic lead? Clean sounds crummy. Well, 
Uh, so listen to the lead for uh, Sultans of Swing that has no, uh, that's just completely clean. It sounds insane. It's amazing. Uh, I just I just posted on my Instagram yesterday. Um, but do you need to have effects? Rich, you're probably like a classic rock or a rock guy, and so you're wanting that sound. So no, you don't need to. It's still pentatonic, whether it's clean or whether the guitar's plugged in or not, it's still pentatonic. But if you want it to sound, you know, like a, like a searing electric solo, then yeah, you probably want to have a little bit of uh, overdrive on that, you know? Okay, um, it's, it'd be much easier with electric than acoustic. Yeah, to some degree, the electric guitar is a little bit easier. It, it, you know what it is? It's kind of like driving a, sp a sports car as opposed to a sedan. Uh, a sports car is going to be more responsive but it's also going to be a little bit rougher when you play it. The electric guitar is like that. When you just touch the strings on an electric, I mean, they just sound right away, whereas, um, you know, an acoustic guitar is a little bit more forgiving, but you typically have to hit the strings harder and fret them harder and those sorts of things. So it's a, it's a give and take. There's not a better, if you will. Uh, is it even possible to improvise and know what chords are, be, are played listening to a song? Indeed, that's I cover that in the ear training portion of the Unstoppable Guitar System. Again, uh, all the anything that I'm talking to you about, and watch, I I implore you to listen to these questions the way that I'm answering them. I number one, I've got to refer you to the program because people are asking these questions. They want to do big things, right? Which it's not going to be an easy answer. It's not like I can just say, "Oh, is it?" Well, I mean, I can answer this. I can say, "Yep." Yep, it's possible. But if you want to know how to do it, don't you? You don't want just yep. So yes, it's possible, but like here's how to do it. So inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, which you get literally you're getting for a buck today, then um, yes, that whole thing will show, it'll show you how to do this in um, just search ear when you're inside the program. Literally in the upper left-hand corner, you just type in ear, and you're going to come across to the ear part, um, and then call and response, minimalistic blues, all that stuff, okay? How long to play the exercise in a practice session? Glad you asked, Icky Mud. So here's the deal. Again, this is what makes this so customizable, is that if you are a player who only has five minutes a day, then you've only got five minutes a day. I'm not going to be one to argue that, that you might have more time. I would uh, challenge you to say I think you got more time and you could find more time, but that's up to you. If you say you only have five minutes, you can do five minutes. If you have five hours to work on that, you're going to get a lot more out of that than five, you know, you're going to get 60 times the amount of, um, of practice time out of it. So it's going to make you a lot better player than just practice in five minutes. So it doesn't matter. Uh, I would say at least five minutes, but you can do 10, 15 minutes. That would be great. Uh, those are minimums. But again, try not to trap yourself. I don't even like saying stuff like that because it, it allows someone to, you know, maybe what happens if they want to play for a half hour and I'm saying 15 minutes and I'm like, well, that's enough. You know, if it's challenging you and you're only going to do five minutes, then do 15. But I'm saying don't put parameters on yourself. You know, if you start getting bored over some time because you're just so good, then great. Move on to something else. Move on to some songs. Other than that, you know, don't limit yourself. Um, okay. Great, great, great. Uh, and, and, and I got that question again. Is this in addition to the UGS I recently got? Binky BK. Binky BK. I'll have Jason answer that um, because we were we were talking about that. So Binky BK, be looking for Jason's answer inside the chat area. Again, folks that are on YouTube, if you're wondering what the heck, why I'm not reading your question, you're not at yourguitarstage.com slash live, and we've got room for you to be in there to answer to, to answer your questions. So head over there right now, because I'm getting to these questions, and I'm not seeing your question on YouTube, okay? And I want to see your question. I want to answer it, okay? So please head over there. Uh, but look out for Jason's answer on that one um, in regards to UGS members, okay? What about picks on each finger when finger picking? Strict, you can do that. I have my own opinions about that. I don't like them. I don't like finger picks. That's a personal preference. There are guys that can blaze better than I can on guitar with finger picks, and there are guys that suck worse than I do with finger picks. So it, it has nothing to do with the finger picks. If you want to do that, you can, okay? But um, it's really up to you, okay? Okay, great, great, great. Uh, Ron, did I see your question? <clears throat> Rudrish, how to shred? Practice a lot. 
Seriously, practice a lot. I recently started the first 30 and 360, and it's and it's very challenging. Out of the UGS offer, seems like a lot <clears throat> to take on all at once. What's the best way to make use of all these resources and not get overwhelmed? Tim, that's why it's day by day. Anybody who's in 365, I implore you to just stick with the program. Just do day one, on day one. Do day two, on day two. That's why I specifically set it up to be only that way. If you wanted to go ahead, you could, but that's not the point. The point is, is to keep you on task. And on Mondays, you're doing alternate picking. You know, on Sundays, you're doing finger picking. And each week, you're coming back to it. But during the rest of the week, you've got some time to, to, to let all that sink in and to work on something else. Uh, and then as far as, um, you know, the 30 lessons, I mean, you can blaze through those pretty quickly, I think, you know. Plus, those are there for you for, for you know, you have those unlimited for, for a lifetime if you want. So um, I would say do the practices every day, but separately go into the top 30 lessons and just do those, okay? Um, no, so this is $79 for, the, for, for UGS, I mean, for 365 is a one-time thing. It, then it's yours. It's not ongoing. Uh, what's your opinion about using a metronome? Yeah, use a metronome for sure. It's really important. Uh, because it will help. Now, in the beginning, don't use a metronome because it's going to frustrate you, okay? But for those that, um, and I'm sorry, I've got to uh, adjust my, my butt here a little bit because this seat is, is, I need to get like a pad here or something, stadium pad. Um, yeah, practicing with a metronome is great. It will, it will keep you on task. I've got videos for that inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, which you're getting today for a buck, okay? So yeah, when you're in there, anytime you have a question on anything like that, stuff, any of that, go in the upper left-hand corner, type in what you're looking for, metronome, chords, scales, blues, theory, uh, octaves, uh, pentatonic, minor, modes, whatever. You just type whatever it is you're looking for and bingo, bango, jango, you're gonna get all that right there, okay? Um, Eric, should we also practice some of the exercises of the past weeks? What is your advice? No, I'm saying do not. Uh, keep, keep, stay on the program because the program graduates with each week. Week one is the easiest. Week two is a teeny tiny bit harder. Week three is a teeny tiny bit harder and it graduates. So there's no need in looking backwards. Okay, just stay on task. That's, that's what's going to help you a lot, okay? All right, great, 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 great questions. Any tips on pinch harmonics? Alex, I've got videos for that inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. Again, you're getting it for a buck today. If you don't want all of these high quality videos for the insanely cheap price of a buck today, then you can search for that kind of stuff on YouTube. Um, I have a video for that on YouTube. Uh, just search Your Guitar Sage Harmonics, and I think you could even search pinch harmonics specifically. But if you really want to get good at pinch harmonics, um, the, the, you know, I have this on a nice clean setting right now, which I'm not going to change right now, but, but what you want to do is you want to use the, the lower strings. You're not going to hear it very loud right now because there's no overdrive, but you're going to hear that type of thing. You want to use the lower strings and uh, lower frets. But watch that video because it has a lot of detail in it, Alex. Okay, either the one inside the one inside the program is a lot more detail. Uh, the one on YouTube, obviously, it's not as it's not as detailed. Uh, I have used wooden picks. I don't like them. They're a little dark sounding. Uh, yeah. Please tell me about the muting in the sixth string exercise. I did that already, so I probably will not talk about that again, my friend. But should I really want want to learn finger picking? I'm way too comfortable using a pick. Hmm. You know the answer to that, right? Um, well, here's the deal. If you want, if you like the sound of finger picking, then yes. But just because you're used to doing something doesn't mean, I mean, look, th th you know, I mentioned it several times in the broadcast. If you, the reason that you're so comfortable using a, using a pick and not finger picking is because you're using a pick and you're not using finger picking. Does that make sense? I'll say it again. The reason that you're so good at using a pick and not good at finger picking is because you use a pick all the time instead of finger picking. So if you started finger picking all the time, you'd be really good at that. And if you stopped picking up your pick, you'd not be as good at that. So uh, if you like the sound of finger picking, then do it. Just because you're comfortable at something is no reason to not 
look at something else, okay? That's called your comfort zone. Get the hell out of there as quickly as possible and do something that's outside your comfort zone if you want to get better, okay? You got to get out of your comfort zone real quick. Run, okay? No, seriously though, if you want to become a better player, it's what you do. Uh, Eric, uh, regarding movable diatonic exercise, what fingers should be used? Movable diatonic exercise. Uh, use the first and fourth finger. If you're talking about the octaves, yeah, use the first and fourth finger. Okay. Again, all this is covered inside the first 30 lessons there of the program of, of the Unstoppable Guitar System. You're getting that for a buck today along with the entire uh, 365. It's like literally you guys are getting everything. Okay. Like the whole enchilada. Uh, for 30 days, so it's like l no limit to it, okay? Okay, great, great, great. How to mute in this chat? I don't know. I don't know if there's a way to mute in this chat. I think I know who you're talking about, though. Um, okay, I saw you on the Thalia site. Do you use a Thalia capo? I do. I don't have it sitting here right now. It's sitting in my drawer here, but I do. I love the Thalia capo. It's it's a great, it's, it's a little bit on the pricey side, but it's a great capo. You'll have it for the rest of your life, you know. Uh, Vicky's going to sleep. She's 3.30. She's on the other side of the world, so good night, Vicky. Okay, any recommendations on ear training? I have heard that it is best to use a piano as it's easier to ear train chromatically on the piano. Using a piano is great. Using a guitar is great. I have uh, lots of ear training videos for this inside the system. Uh, I have one called Hum and Hunt. It's like a game where basically you, you, you hum a note, and then you look for it. That's an F. And it's just literally that easy. That's where you would start, but then I have other exercises as well in there. So check, uh, once you're inside, once you, you pay the buck uh, for the whole month, then inside the program, upper left-hand corner, type in the word ear, and you will be able to do it, um, okay? Uh, Chuck is saying, Eric, is the $1 offer only good for today? My disability doesn't come in until Tuesday. Uh, are you saying you don't have a buck for today, Chuck? Is that what you're saying? Because if that is what you're saying, we might, uh, I think it may be open. For, I, I, I tell you, I'll have Jason answer that because I'm not too sure how long we're keeping this open. But it's a buck. Literally, it's a dollar. You're not paying anything other than that. My guess would be, even without your disability, you got a buck. But if you don't, that's okay too. We'll let Jason answer that, okay? Um, so be looking out for his answer, Chuck, in there, okay? But I get what you're talking about. Um, thank you for watching today too, my friend. Okay, is there a good stretching technique for your fretting hand that I could try? There is indeed. It's on day um, five, six, uh, it's on day four that I just covered inside the, the, the program. So yes, indeed, I've got lots of stretching and reaching exercises inside the program. I've got a few inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, but literally there's a whole day created to stretch and reach inside the 365 program. So think about it. You got it for one day a week you got 52 weeks, so I have 52 exercises for stretch and reach. And it starts really easy and slowly progresses to get more difficult. And I promise you, I don't care if you've been playing for 60 years, I've got exercises in you that are going to blow you away. They're going to be like, all right, all right, Eric. All right, I'll take your challenge, and now you're kicking my A right here, okay? Seriously, there are exercises in there that are very difficult to do, that, but you don't have to do them all, right? This is about growing. We're on a continuum. We're growing here. So that's what we're trying to do, bottom line. Just get better, okay? Okay, does your system include building a song repertoire to apply all of these techniques to? Uh, so 365 does not, that's just practice only, but yes, I've got all sorts of techniques, all sorts of bits and pieces about how to, how to, you know, what chords work together, the Nashville number system, yes, all, all of this, okay? Um, do you continue to practice the other things if you, yes, yes, continue to practice everything, that's, that's fine, you know? If there's nothing wrong with doing, with doing that, you want to be practicing all your stuff, okay? I'm sorry, the chat's moving really quick, folks. That's why I'm not over on YouTube because it's, it move, would be even moving faster than this. So I'm trying to get to as many of these as possible uh, while being thorough and giving everybody an answer, okay? Is there palm muting lessons in UGS? Indeed, there is. Both left and right hand. There's left hand muting, right hand muting, okay? Whew, it's moving quick. Moving very quickly. 
Uh... <laughs> You're amazing, Eric. I'm a lifetime membership, lifetime member. Great, and it's the best. I could be so much better. It's not me. It's your lessons. I know. There's a lot to know about the guitar. That's why I say you gotta take it easy, man. Slow down. Slow and steady wins the race. You can only do what you can go, what you can do. Man, put that daggone sandwich in front of you, everybody, and look at it. Put a sandwich in front of you whenever you're practicing guitar. When you get frustrated, look at that sandwich and say, eat the whole damn sandwich solid. Go. And if your answer is no, then you need to think the same way about playing guitar. You're not going to do that. You're not going to eat the whole sandwich, okay, in one fell swoop. It's not going to happen. You're not going to learn guitar in one fell swoop. Take Okay, breathe. All right, great, oh, great questions, okay. Uh, what if you get stuck on a section during practice? Do you continue on or work on that until you've mastered it? Look, um, you, you know, master is a, is, a, is a strong word, right? We know what we mean by it, but uh, you know, what we're trying to do is get better. And you can always get better at something. It's impossible to get to, to stop getting better at something. It's impossible. There's no such thing as a limit when it comes to our abilities as, as, as beings, okay? And there is no limit. If you don't understand that already, stick with me longer because I'm going to convince you and you're finally going to see it and you're going to be like, oh my God, I can rule the world because you can. I'm telling you. But bottom line is you got to stop limiting yourself, you know, so you're not going to master it, okay? You're just going to get better at it. But should you stick with it? You should get it to where you got the basic idea because the following week it's going to keep going. So you, if you keep up with the pace, it's going to, you're going to be good, okay? Don't worry about falling off. And if it, here's the deal. If you don't feel like you got it down very much that week, then, you know, the next week just take the next one a little bit slower. And here's the other thing. This is the great thing about this program is when you have a video and you're done with that exercise, you click a little thing that says, I've watched this video. I'm done with it. So that if you go on vacation for a week or a month and you want to come back to it, you can do that. It's there for you. And it's not like you've missed anything. Okay. Now I would implore you to let this thing be your calendar, if you will, so that you do pick up that guitar every day and that you do peck away at each one of these seven key focus areas every single week. But I'm saying to you, you know, something happens in the family and you got to have a week off or you're going on vacay or something like that. You got it. You're, 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 you're set. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, Rudrish, uh, we hear you. You really needed that guitar. There's a lot of folks that needed that guitar, so we appreciate it. But please stop jamming up the, the, um, the chat. I appreciate you, but thank you. Let's not do that. Let's, let's, let's be nice, right? What if you get stuck on a section during the practice? Do you continue to work? Okay, we answered that one, yeah. Good, 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 good. How do you write a melody on the guitar? Well, first, you got you to understand the major scale and you have to understand where to find those notes. I cover that in the first 30 lessons inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, the one that you're getting for a buck today, okay? So literally, um, that's how you write a melody. Okay, start there. And then later on, you'll get into the um, call and response. You'll get into um, minimalistic blues where I'm teaching you how to phrase and that sort of thing, okay? Where can I find 365 on your site? Mark, uh, the link right underneath this whole enchilada. That's where you want to go. Try that out. Start there. That's, that's going to be the cheapest way. It's going to be the best way to do this. Uh, that's where you're going to find it. The link is right below, my friend. Okay. Man, good, good questions, man. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there content in Udemy that's not in UGS? No. Uh, really quick, there's a website called Udemy. It's like paid YouTube. We've got the number one guitar lesson series there. Uh, literally 100,000 people, over 100,000 people have gone through that program. It's nearly a five-star program. And it's nothing compared to the Unstoppable Guitar System. Okay, way more information inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. Uh, and that's the one that's constantly growing. So there's nothing in Udemy that's not in the Unstoppable Guitar System. There's a ton of stuff in the Unstoppable Guitar System that's not in the Udemy course. That's why we always say, do the Unstoppable Guitar System course if that's what you want, is the complete, the complete one, okay? 
All right. Dell is saying UGS is uh, great. Helps me out a lot. 365 plan kicked it up a notch. Nice. All right. Getting better and better. I love it. Fantastic. Uh, as chord transitions become easier, is it easier to learn more complex chord transitions? Indeed. Just like anything, it just stacks. It just stacks. You just got to believe me on that. I mean, that's just I know it sounds like I'm being rude here, but that's common sense. If you get good at A, then B is easier, and it's just a, pr a progression, you know. Everybody, listen to me right now. Think about where you're at on the guitar today. I don't care if you've been playing for a week. Think about before that week happened. Think about before you started playing guitar and the first day you picked up the guitar. I can remember how I was playing, and I sucked. Eddie Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Jimmy Page, Eric Clapton, Eric Johnson, I don't care who it was, Steve Vai, Everybody sucked on day one. Everybody was the same. No one got a free card. No one gets an extra dose of, well, you're going to be a guitar player. They just sucked. There was those days where you're learning those rudimentary bits and pieces. It's not you. It's the guitar. Okay, But we have to learn these bits and pieces. That's why I've developed these programs because I've been very passionate about the guitar since I, was, since I started playing at 14 and then started teaching it like two years later to all my buddies in high school and then that you know, grew from there, okay? Um, okay, all right, great, 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 great. Sandwich, it's an elephant sandwich here. Yeah, I've heard that, right? Exactly. All right, slow down, grasshopper, indeed. Me, probably, yeah, because I've got my, my uh, caffeine here. Mm. I needed more of that, like a hole in the head. Yeah! <laughs> All right. Oh, more questions. One buck sold, Beach is saying. Yeah, I knew. I mean, it's literally like, what, a, a penny? I mean, if we could have made it a penny, we could, but we just couldn't with, our, with, the, with the system that we've got. So we're saying a buck, literally one buck. For those folks watch, watching on YouTube, uh, same thing. It's just like... Uh, go to yourguitarstage.com slash live. Look at the bottom. There's the link right there. Click on that button. You will literally get both programs unlimited for 30 days. Meaning you can check out, you can check out every single video you wanted, learn, become a ninja, everything else, and then say, I don't want to do this anymore. And uh, there you go, you know. <laughs> Steven, 007. <laughs> Do chords have a high note or the second tonic? Not sure what you mean by that, Ron, but uh, chords have a high note or the second tonic. I'm not sure what you mean by that. I can't really answer that. Uh, but chords do have a high note. They've got a high note, they've got a low note, and they've got in-between notes, right? So, um, but, and, but if you're asking a second tonic, like most chords, when you play them, they'll have two or three tonics. In this case here, for this bar chord, we got three tonics, so sometimes that's what you get, you know? Kevin's saying, if you want to learn guitar, dollar's a smoking deal. Don't let it go by. Indeed. I mean, who didn't have a dollar? I'll cover it if someone contacts me to get my info. Jason, thank you. That's real kind, buddy. <laughs> Forget the book. I'm waiting for the 365 movie. That's the thing, Team Memphis, is that it is a movie. It's like 365 little vignettes. It's like, you know, you can binge watch it and become a ninja, right? Uh, if you want to do that, if you want to do, you know, 11 of them a day in a month, you could do that, and you could go through the whole program in a month and say, see you, Eric, thanks for making me a ninja guitar player, but I'm out of here. And then when you're a rock star, just give me a give me a thumbs up from stage. You know, give me a shout out. That's all I'm asking for. Uh, I don't have a dollar in my account today, but will tomorrow. Can I get this deal tomorrow? I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to have it open. I'll be looking for Jason's response in, in here about that. But yes, I'm pretty sure we're going to have it open. In fact, I think we're having it open for a few days yet. So, okay. Good. Rudrish, how to play chords cleanly. Play them often. Play them often and watch the playing the chords cleanly video inside uh, UGS. That's going to that's gonna get you there. What about bar chords, strengthening fingers? All these exercises are going to help you with strengthening your fingers, every single one of them, okay? Do you like Breaking Bad or Games of Thrones? Both, but Breaking Bad was really dark. So Game of Thrones, that's a light one, uh, but it's a little bit more f fantasy for me. So Game of Thrones was a little bit, um, I don't know, I liked it a little bit. 
I liked it a little bit better. I don't know when it was dark. How, how old? They're young am I? I am 49. Just 49 on May 31st. How many great guitar players are starving to death in Nashville? Well, the ones that are playing out, they're not starving at all because they're playing out and they really are great. People hire them. Uh, the people that are starving and the people that are great and they never go out and play are the ones that are playing out live and they suck. But the ones that are, that are great, that are playing out, are not starving. They're, they've got, everybody's got gigs. There's gigs, plenty of gigs. But that's a great question. It's true. There's so many amazing guitar players here. So many. Uh, my fingers seem too fat for many necks. Is that just because I'm fretting too hard and muting other strings at the same time? Will this improve over time? A hundred percent, Ken. Uh, I mean, there is just, there is only one answer for that, and it's indeed. I mean, there are some great jazz players that have these big old sausage fingers, and they, they're just all over the fretboard. So once you learn the basic technique of really being on your fingertip, it's like uh, video four or something inside the UGS program. So make sure you, you, you check that out, okay? Um, again, whole, whole enchilada is a buck, okay? Um, so check that out, but there's like four or five things that I say specifically to do when you're fretting. And in the beginning, everybody thinks their fingers are too fat and their hands are too small. Everybody does. Oh, I've seen girls come in with these thin little fingers. My fingers are too fat. Your fingers are not too fat. <laughs> you just had not learned the technique yet. Because it's not like a piano. Piano is very forgiving. You got that big fat key. You can mash it with your hand almost, you know. So, um, yeah. Jim is saying, is it Wi-Fi only? The program, yeah, you don't download it because here's the deal. Not only is it, I do these live broadcasts uh, that are not like this, but they're much smaller where we have just folks in our program there and I'm getting to all the questions and what have you. We're doing that, uh, well, we're, we're gonna start doing that now twice a month. Um, but um, we're constantly uploading new videos to this. So every, every month, we're putting new content in there. I'm putting new jam tracks, etc. Uh, we have nearly 600 videos in there now, nearly 600 jam tracks. And we're constantly adding new material and changing it and making it better, better. Um, so that's the only way to do it. Uh, you can't do it by sending out DVDs, right? That's old school. So I'd love to have that, but there's no way to, to update those. Whoo! Okay. Um... Okay, um, I don't think I understand that question. Sorry. Uh, how much for the, for monthly versus lifetime UGS? Uh, here's the deal. Fo follow that link, my friend. It's just too much to explain because we have folks that want to that want to pay us for one just one thing and get a good deal. We've got other folks that want to pay us monthly. Then there's folks that want to pay us uh, not monthly, but they want to do payment plans. Uh, so we have all we've specifically created a few different ways for you to do it. Not so many that's overwhelming, but a few so that you can choose to, to do it the way you want to do it. And it's way too much detail, my friend, uh, Cray, uh, I claim Cray. So it's too much detail for me to go into that right now. If you click on that link, you'll, you'll see options for, for all that stuff, okay? All right, great, great, great. Good, it sucks being broke. It's okay, Archibald, because this is just the broadcast you need, because broke, broke is a joke, gets you in, gets you this massive program for a buck. So you can be broke as a joke and still rule the world of guitar, okay? That's, that's why we did this. So, it, there's, so there's no excuses. It's like the only reason anybody wouldn't want to do this is if they're just like, I just like, I think Eric's funny and I don't really want to improve at the guitar. So that's it. Then, then great. Then that's the only people that wouldn't get into this. Otherwise, uh, or the people that are in it already, right? Um... In UGS, can I select which lesson I want or believe I need most as my next lesson? Indeed, it's it's a la carte. So so like basically the way I have look the only way, the best way to do this, Patrick, is to get in there, and that's that's why we tell everybody because like to explain it's like trying to explain what an avocado tastes like, what chocolate tastes like. If I explain that to you, it's one thing. When you eat chocolate, you're like, oh, dear Lord, what is this? This is amazing. Uh, so, like, if I'm describing UGS to you, it's like I can kind of do it, but, like, you got to get in there and see it and then be like, dear Lord, he isn't playing around. Beginner, intermediate, and advanced sections are the main thing. Then there's a resources section. Then there's an update section. 
beginner, intermediate, and advanced, obvious, right? And under, and under each one of those, you have all these different sections like techniques and, uh, well, actually the beginner section just is step by step. And I say for that, go through the beginner section step by step. Don't, don't stray from that because that's really to get your, to get you going to where you're not going to mess up. The only way you can mess up is if you quit and you're not doing that. Okay, so indeed, that's what the beginner section. But after you get the beginner section, you got an intermediate and advanced, and then I break it into theory and technique and blues and this, that, and the other thing. Then you can jump around, and do whatever you want. There's also a search section, so you can just jump straight to you want to, to what you want. Okay. Um, okay, make sense. Good, good. What's my favorite guitar to use? I love I love the Fender Stratocaster, and after that, it's probably the Gibson Les Paul. So. Oh, thank you, Sophia. That's very sweet of you. I appreciate that. Super, super kind. All right. All I can say is this really is uh, an excellent system. UGS uh, 365 is a great foundation for taking you to the to writing your own stuff and having skills to do so. They just uh, that's just my take. UGS well worth the time, and 400 isn't jack diddly. That's what we've been selling this for for years, my friends. Listen to me. Dead film stars telling you right now. We were talking the other day in the live broadcast. Um, that's what we've been literally that we sell that program for four hundred dollars for years now, every single day. So that's what we normally charge for it. And I'm saying to you, a dollar, like literally. That's and you get the 365 unlimited for for 30 days meaning unlimited you get to go anywhere you want there's no videos we're not holding back from you okay it says you don't have to pay for your instructor re to repeat demonstration that is uh what owns in tr yeah true my opinion uh your time when you have it enough yeah so what he's saying is you know when you go through a video and um you know if you're meeting with a one-on-one -on -one instructor which is great if you can afford to do that that's you know i've done that for years i've taught for years like that uh but you know unless you're videotaping the actual the lesson if you need to go over that stuff again you're paying a whole nother however much you know i mean i had a, a buddy visit me yesterday we had a guitar lesson it was 150 bucks now i charge more than most people but um i've been doing it for a little while too and um but all that to say, 150 bucks is a lot of money when you can learn a lot more from a program, okay? But I get it, too. Some people just want to just want to meet and one-on-one. -on -one. I get it. Uh, Mark is saying, uh, Dead Film Star, I totally agree. UGS is amazing. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. Uh, it's nice to see real people who are in the program because I know some people are like, is this real? Um, it's real. We've been doing this a while, and, and we love doing it, so... Um, yeah, indeed, indeed. Okay, so, okay, I am, uh, we're going to keep going, but um, but I just, I, I moved over to a different chat here, sorry. Same, same chat, just a bigger, bigger window. Um, do I have to play bar chords past the 12th fret to play an octave above? Ron, no, you don't. What Ron's saying is, you know, if you're playing your bar chords, like going past the 12th fret, that sounded like um, Looney Tunes. <laughs> Okay, anyhow, so at the 12th fret, do you need to do that? No. But doing so makes you think tinier, and you're using other techniques that you normally wouldn't use, so it's definitely going to help. It's going to help your playing some, but no, you're rarely going to play, you know, you're rarely going to do that, you know. Um, have you ever had a student that you thought would never learn and ended up being one of your best you've ever seen? No. Uh, when they come in and uh, usually they have great practice habits, right? The difference between a great student and a student who sucks is practice. That's the only thing that's different. And I've had students that come in and they seem to, to really get everything right away. And I'm like, wow, they're going to be great if they keep this up. And then if they don't keep up the practice, they end up just becoming like any of the other players that aren't practicing. Uh, but I've had students come in and nothing seems, you know, they seem, they seem sharp or whatever, but like in the beginning, it's hard to tell that they're going to be amazing. Uh, but then after a while, you see them practicing and practicing and coming in, doing exactly what you've taught them, and then they're amazing, and you're like, man, this person can kill it. So I've had uh, several students like that um, throughout the years that just like, they just came in consistently, practiced, and just slayed it, you know? So indeed, great stuff. Um, what do I think about Don Felder and Ed King? Um, so many great guitar players, 
I don't know them. I apologize. I uh, was recently asked to be part of a new band, Casual, looking to do covers and playing gigs. I love doing covers, by the way. I've never done anything like that before. I play uh, at church. Any advice for a band member, Rookie? Antonia is saying. Yeah, Antonia, don't be scared. Practice, practice, practice. People say, well, I'm so scared to go on stage. Well, part of that practice is it's because you're unsure. Because when you practice something over and over and over and over and over again to where you're, you're literally, you could do it in your sleep, you start losing that that being frightened. But the reason that we're a little bit frightened about things sometimes is because we're maybe a little bit unsure if we really truly know the subject matter. Okay, so good to be honest with ourselves and say, you know, what do we need to do? So practice your butt off, and then when you go on stage, you're gonna be all ready, you know? That would be my best advice for you, is to, is to just, you know, is to just, just slay it, you know? How can get the 30-day trial for a guy waiting for his debility, L. Perry? I think we answered that one already, but again, L. Perry, it's a dollar. Uh, so, one dollar. So literally, that's it. There's nothing more to it. Uh, okay, great question. What's the best way to learn to play individual strings? I know this is gonna sound silly, Michael, but play individual strings, okay? Whatever it is that you're having difficulty with on the guitar, do that because that's exactly what you need. You need to hyper-focus. That's the whole point of this whole 365 program is that you're hyper-focusing on a specific area. When art students go to art school and the first day of class they walk in, the, the teacher doesn't say, all right, here's your canvas, here are your paints, go. Because if they did that, the students would all look at each other being like, well, but what does she want? But what does she want? What does he want? But usually what happens is, here your canvas, here's your canvas. Today we're gonna be using acrylics. And in fact, we're only gonna be using two colors today. And I want you to take these two colors, pick whatever two colors you want, and I want you to create a scene. I want you to, to create a picture that has to do with your heart or has to do with love or whatever. And they put some parameters. And what that does to us as beings, as creative beings, is it makes us go, well, I can do that, that's fine. Because now we have some parameters. If I just say, draw something, you could be, I mean, I've had people do that all the time. They, they, they say, play something. I'm like, well, what do you want to hear? Well, just play anything, okay. I mean, just like, what do you want me to play? If you want to, you want to play some Hendrix, you know, you want to play, uh, you know. You want Hendrix, do you want, you know, do you want, name it, tell me what you want, give me some, you know, some parameters and then I can do it. And so, um, you know, that's what happens. If we want to learn to play individual strings, we have to focus on that specific thing and then get good at that. That's how you do it. Um, I have friends in Alaska. They don't have Wi-Fi or private instructors on their island. How would you recommend they learn? Uh, I'd say books would be a great way. Something that doesn't require electricity or Wi-Fi. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what guitars do you recommend for people who want to play hard rock? Uh, anything with humbucker pickups. I cover this in detail inside the Unstoppable Guitar System in a section called the, the Ultimate Pursuit of Tone where I'm sitting with my, um, my guitar tech and we're going over all the bits and pieces that what makes one guitar, one amp, or one pedal sound like it sounds and what we use it for, okay? Uh, Bob Dell, he's in the UGS and just finished the chord visualization section, which is a brand new section I just put in there. It's like three or, three or four hours long. Uh, fantastic, the lights are on now. Nice, thank you for the testimony, Bob. Uh, so I just put in this chord visualization, uh, color-coded way to understand the chords. It's never been done before. It's literally something that I was laying in bed at night, woken up and said, I need to do this. And, and I've actually created a whole series, but it wasn't the way I wanted it to, so I just completely scrapped it and started over again, another three, four hours of lessons, and then created what I did here, which is, uh, which is basically basing the notes of the scale according to the, the, the colors of the rainbow, and I have a real specific reason why I do that, and I cover that in that program. And Bob, thank you so much for letting me know. Um, okay. Um... All right, uh, Drew is saying, I ate beans and rice for two months to become a lifetime member and well worth it. Yes, it's a big investment, but it, but it, it's uh, becoming a great player's worth it. Beautiful, I love that dedication, Drew. That is fantastic. And beans and rice, that might be my favorite food. So, nice. I'll eat some. Beautiful, okay. 
Um, how to play lead and chords so song is recognizable to others listening. I can play chords or melody, but can't get it all together. Karen, you're missing pieces. And this is the thing about guitars. People, um, and I love the question. Here, here, I'll give you the answer for, first. But again, on these very broad questions, I can, I can answer them to you, but there's still the answer is going to be so general because you're talking about like, well, how do I become a better lover? Okay, well, you know, I can tell, we can talk about some things. But, um, so how to play lead in chords so the song's recognizable to others listening. I mean, there's so many different variables about that, making sure it's in the same key, the same tempo, same rhythm, make sure that the chords and the scale, the solo is all in the same key, make sure that you're singing on pitch, make sure you're singing the right lyrics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Many, there's so many different pieces that put this together. But, uh, Karen, you're missing pieces, obviously. We all are. You know, because we jump around on YouTube and what have you, and we're like, well, why does my playing still suck? Because you don't have a step-by-step -step method. That's why I've written the books that I've written. That's why I've created the courses that I've created is because it's step-by-step. -step. I want to make it to where someone can come with the guitar, never played before, and literally I could take them all the way to the end or at least get them really, 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 really far along to where they're like, all right. I'm good, I'm self-sufficient, I'm slaying it. So that's what UGS is all about. Um, but I talk about the relationship of chords and scales. <clears throat> I have videos for like that stuff on YouTube, but again, it's not the step-by-step -step method that, that UGS provides, okay? Uh, but understanding the relationship between chords and scales, because they're 100% is a relationship. And if you don't understand that, and it's not hard, it's actually pretty simple once you understand it. Um, the Nashville number system that I teach inside of UGS is will absolutely unravel the whole thing for you. And you'll be like, oh my gosh. Something I didn't learn, by the way, um, till many years of playing guitar, and I was always studying music theory and uh, went to classical school and everything else, didn't understand it fully until I moved to Nashville. So, or didn't understand the way that I do now, okay? So that will definitely help you a ton, okay? Oh, okay. Um, L. Perry, I know it's a dollar, but how do I buy it for him? Thanks, Lee. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Lee. Um, if you, you can buy the program for somebody else, you know? I mean, you can do that. Just you would, you would uh, um, put their credentials in, you know, their email, their, their name, or you do it with your name and your email, your credentials, and then just give that to them, and then they can they can uh, they can do that. You know, uh, Rudolph, how are you doing, my friend? Thank you for your service. Rudolph is a, a vet, and we love our vets, so thank you, buddy. I'm a UGS member. Uh, how do I get weekly exercises every week? And if so, where? Gary, um, love it. Thank you, Gary. Hit that link below, or I'm sorry, Gay. I thought that was, uh, I had a lesson with Gary yesterday. Gay, um, yes, Mark is telling you right now, go to the My Library tab. Um, if you're in the new version of UGS, which you should be. If you're not, and you're in UGS already, just email support at yourguitarsage.com. We'll get you set up. Uh, what guitar do you recommend for blues? This is it right here. Fender Stratocaster is my favorite blues guitar. I love it. Oh, John, Don Felder of, 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 yeah, of, of, yes. Okay, Don Felder. Um, that's what I thought. Don Felder was, uh, was, uh, was with the Eagles. And Ed King, uh, Sweet Home Alabama, uh, Leonard Skinner. Yes, indeed. Uh, so, I mean, I know all these guys. They teach their songs, but I don't always know the names of, of each one of the players, so. Um, okay, so... I've heard mentioned that the reason you do not see Les Pauls in church settings was because they have too much body, especially for small venues. What does that mean? Would you say it's probably true? Antonia is saying. Okay, so Les Pauls are, they're, they tend to be just more aggressive guitars. They're great for hard rock and those sorts of things. Uh, they don't get the real nice chimey type of, you know. Almost acoustic sounding bits that you would get from a Strat or maybe a Telecaster. A Telecaster is a little bit of a hybrid. It can sound a little bit like a Strat, a little bit like a Tele, or a little bit like a, a, a Strat and a little bit like a Les Paul. But the Les Paul is pretty much like, 
you know, ACDC type of Led Zeppelin type of drive, if you will, okay? Uh, just has that rock and roll sound to it. And it's hard to tame it. So when they say it has too much body, uh, and I've never heard that said before, too much body, but essentially what they mean is it's just a little bit more of an aggressive guitar that's hard to tame. Uh, but yeah, you could use it definitely in a church setting. It's just you, your, chim, your chimey type of, you know, pretty sounds are not going to sound as nice on the Les Paul as they would say like on a Strat. Um, I've heard it, uh, it's better to practice scales or chords on an acoustic rather than electric. Is that true for building strength? Um, it's not necessarily true. It's just different. Uh, so it's like if you're practicing on an acoustic, it's like swimming with your clothes on. It's going to drag you down uh, and it's going to make you work harder, which can be great, right? It's going to make you work harder and make you a better player. So uh, when, then when you go to the electric, it's easier. Okay. So not necessarily right or wrong. It's just that's what it does. Uh, great question, Marquita. I've always had problems using scales to improvise over chords using a looper, El Perry is saying, I know I should be able to create something musical. Any advice, Lee Perry? All right, El Perry, yes. Watch the minimalistic blues and the call and response sections inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System. That's the, the thing you're getting for a buck today that has that whole system in there. It's in the advanced section. And you can easily, you get in there, it's a buck. You go to the left-hand corner, you say call and response or minimalistic. You just type that, boom, pops up. Watch that from video one to the end. It's not, not super long, maybe an hour's worth of material, um, and you will under, start understanding this concept. Then the call and response, you'll be actually playing back and forth with me. You know, I'll be going like, and you'll be going, and I'll go, and you'll go, and I'm gonna be walking you through it, okay? So it's not like, go. It's like I'm walking you through it. You're going to understand it, okay? Uh, you build strength regardless of playing, Leon sang. Indeed. If you've got your fingers on this, that's just the whole point of this program, my friends, and the whole reason that we've got these seven different areas is because to make you diverse, because there's different bits and pieces of our brain that we got to use. Uh, but any playing at all, when your fingers are pressing against us, you're building neural paths, you're building muscle paths, muscle paths? I just made that up. You're building up your muscles, okay? Uh, yeah. All right, great, great stuff. I love going through your course. It helps me to blow my, my music teacher's mind. Yes, I love that, right? What are they saying, Della? You gotta tell me. Um, I love that. So like she's taking one-on-one -on -one lessons and then also in the program and then they're like, what are you, where did you learn that? Great, love it. That's fantastic. Love that. And Karen's in UGS too. Beautiful. Thanks, thanks, friends, for letting us know. Yeah, if you're in UGS, uh, if you're in there, let us know what you think of it um, because other folks, they want to know and there's nothing better than, than testimony. So uh, is it hard? Is it easy? Is it fun? Is it, is it rewarding? What all? Uh, what's the best way to learn to pick individual strings? Okay, we answered that one, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Any recommendations on finding a luthier when there's none in your area? Well, if there's none in your area, you know, you're going to have to go to a different town, right? But I would, I wonder if there's none in your area. I would do a little search in uh, Facebook. I would search Facebook, Craigslist, that sort of thing. Otherwise, like a guitar store oftentimes will have someone there who's a luthier who can work on your guitars. Uh, didn't know what part of UGS talks about chord scale relationship. Uh, Karen, I'm pretty sure I have a section specifically on that, but uh, the Nashville number system part is definitely going to talk about that because basically when you're in a specific key, there's a certain set of notes that are available, which is the major key for that tonic, that, that key, and then there's a set of chords that are available for that key or tonic, and the two go together, okay? Uh, and that will that definitely the national number system covers it. There's so many different ways to view this, to 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 come to to teach this. But the national number system indeed will 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 make sense to you, and it will decipher that for you. But I thought that I have one specifically for uh, bringing those two together. But if I but if I don't, I know I've done lessons for it. Uh, I don't know if I have a whole series for it, but nonetheless, the national number system part will, in the easiest way, uncover that for you. Okay, so just look up Nashville Number System when you're in the program. 
Hey Eric, what's your favorite style of music to teach, play? Are there better styles to focus on when you're learning? Uh, my favorite styles to teach are rock and blues. Those are two of my favorite just because I just have always gravitated towards those two musics. Uh, a lot of the rock music that I listen to is very blues oriented and uh, most rock music is anyhow. Is there better styles to focus on when, when you're learning? Not really. In, in the beginning, what I, what I always think is, um, I always think <sighs> there's basic technique in the beginning. That's why in the first part of the program, in the beginner section of UGS, where I'm walking you step by step by step through this, it doesn't specify any specific genre because for at first we just need to worry about the calisthenics and the specific techniques that are required to play the guitar because you're going to use them in every genre of guitar. Then we start getting more genre specific as we get into the intermediate and advanced sections like swing guitar and blues guitar and that sort of thing uh, because that's when the more details start coming in to effect. Does that make sense? Uh, by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, my friends, and you're wondering why I'm not answering your question, is because I'm only answering questions and the link is in the description of the video. It's super easy to go there. We got room inside the chat room. Do it right now, please. I want to get to your questions, but I can't do it on YouTube. I'm looking at this one giant chat here on my screen. I can't I can't have them both open or I won't see them. Okay, so yourguitarstage.com slash live. The link is in the description of the video. Go over there. I want to answer your questions, okay? Um, is rhythm first to learn on guitar? No, just follow. Look, I'm giving this the whole system to you for one buck today. If you start and just do the beginner section, that's where you're going to start. You're going to be learning some rhythm. You're going to be learning some melody stuff. Um, and so thinking about rhythm as, as opposed to lead guitar, it's only going to confuse you because really one is playing single notes and the other one's playing many notes at once. Uh, typically, you're going to learn rhythm at first, but it's not necessarily, that's not really the way that you look at it. Does that make sense? Okay. Who's the greatest player that I've ever jammed with? Oh, man. Um, I just don't know. There's so many great players here in town, folks that you've never even heard of that are just great players, you know? Um, so there, there's, there's really just so many, you know? Um, all right. Uh, Raymond. Uh, did I say 365 guitar if you have the unstoppable guitar system? Yeah, I believe that's what we decided. Um, I was waiting for Jason's response on that. I didn't see it. But um, yeah, if you're inside, the, if you're an unstoppable guitar system member, uh, I believe that's what we, we were doing. Um, so, you know, I'll have Jason post something about that if he has the time to, because I know he's busy with, with answering as many folks as possible on stuff that I'm not getting to. So Jason, if you can hear me, if you can do that, that'd be great, where they can kind of basic, have a basic idea of what to do. But I believe it's under my library in the, in the new 2.0 version of UGS, okay? Uh, Mary Beth, I was wondering if you could put a way to show that you completed each section in the new 365 to Unstoppable. Indeed, Mary Beth, thank you so much for asking that. Inside the new version of the Unstoppable Guitar System and inside 365, you have a way to mark that video complete. Make sense? So you'll know that you've done that. Make sense? I think so. When I attach my credit card number to a free trial and then the site says $40 plus a dollar uh, set up a month after free trial but doesn't say uh, for how many months. I'm not getting I'm not getting in so I can't get an answer then forget it. Um, clog, it's $1 to get in and then it's $40 a month. So if you want to stay in the program for one month, it's $40 for one month. If you want to stay in the program for a thousand months, then it's $40 a month for a thousand months. Or you can buy it in one fell swoop. Does that make sense? So it's a subscription price. It's like Spotify or anything else that's due in subscriptions, like YouTube Red or uh, YouTube Premium or anything that is a subscription based. So you can buy it under subscription or you can buy the whole thing. Uh, there's many different ways that you can get into the program. So we try to do as many for you as possible uh, to make it easy for you. Okay, uh, there you go. Hopefully that helps, my friends. How often should you change strings on your guitar? Uh, I have videos for this inside the program, um, but I, I always say change your strings. I always change my strings if I'm playing a live gig or if I'm going into the studio. Literally five minutes before this broadcast started, uh, this first string was, was giving me problems. 
because that's with the strings that came on the guitar and I had to change it real super quick. But um, so before a live gig and before going to the studio, I always like to change my strings. Other than that, I don't change strings unless they start sounding dull or they start going out of pitch a lot, meaning you just they're just spent. The strings are just spent. That takes a long time. Um, so change them when you need to change them, I'd say. But I have, for more detail, you know, you, you have to check that out, you know. Uh, Pete's saying, I got the system, a special offer, $199 lifetime. Nice. Thank you so much, Pete. I already had your Udemy course, Complete Guitar System. You have been among my two favorite instructors for your practical advice in all areas possible. Yay. Thank you so much, Pete. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, there, is a, there is an offer in there for, for UGS if you want to be in there for, uh, you know, unlimited for the rest of your life. It's called the Lifetime Membership because it's there for a lifetime. Uh, that's what you want to do. And we've got a special for that too. Like I said, we've got so many specials today, but the, the big one is this dollar offer. I'm just saying do that. And then take your time with it. See if you even like it. You might not like it. You'll probably fall in friggin' love with it, but I'm just saying just do the dollar offer and you can figure everything else out later. Okay. Uh, who's the great, yeah, who's the greatest guitar player? How long does it take, uh, take one of your students to learn to shred. Shred is just a term. That's like saying, that's like saying, how long does it take to be a gladiator? Well, it takes a friggin' long time and a lot of hard ass work. It's <laughs> how long it takes. Um, so like shred, it's not like you, you take a course on shredding. You shred because you, you've gotten to this status and, and it's just like a, a a term that people use. It's for people that play very fast, okay? Um, and it's really a style of guitar more than anything else. It's more like, um, like kind of like heavy metal slash neoclassical type of thing. So uh, it takes a lot of dedication to become a shredder if that's really what, what you're truly going after is that is that status. Mark is saying, I highly recommend the UGS system. Sorry, I'm adjusting my butt here. It's really thorough, complex, yet simple, uh, yet simple enough to develop technique. So he's saying it's complex, yet simple enough to develop technique because, friends, there's a reason that there's nearly 600 videos in there and it's step by step because I don't want someone to get in there who's been playing for 30 years to be like, well, there's nothing in here for me to learn. I want everybody to be able to learn from this. That's why I've done that. And I don't want newbies who've just got their guitar for the first day to get in there and be all confused. That's why it's step by step, especially in the beginning. That's why I've created a course for everyone. Uh, I've always uh, looked at myself as being a diverse player as opposed to being really, really super good at one particular thing. Love a little bit of classical, a little bit of jazz, a little bit of blues, a little bit of rock. I've always been, like in high school and in college, I was always the guy that people would call for filling in whatever it is that they needed filled in. If they needed someone who was a rager at country guitar, they didn't call me. If they needed someone who was a raging shredder, they wouldn't call me, okay? They would call me to be the guy to do all of those things pretty darn good but maybe not the best at every single one thing because you can only spend so much time doing a particular thing, okay? Uh, when you're spending time doing A, you're not spending time doing B, so you're not gonna get better at B, make sense? So, and I try to create the program the same way to where I'm teaching you all these different things so you can go down any avenue that you want if you want to get really good at blues, then go down that avenue. If you want to get really good at swing guitar, go down that avenue. Theory, da 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 So does that make sense? Um, so anyhow, Mark's saying he's been on it and definitely found improvement. My family hears and sees improvement. I've got a long way to go, but it's very, very good and well worth the investment if you're serious about learning. You and me both, Mark, um, I've got a long way to go on guitar. Been playing for 35, 37 years, something like that. Uh, and I have so much to learn on guitar. It's not even funny. It's, it never ends. Does that make sense? It never ends. And does that give you any relief to understand that we're on a spectrum or we're on a continuum? It doesn't matter where you're at. Everybody starts here. Everybody does, right at the beginning. And, and you get to go as far as you want to go. It depends on you. It has nothing to do with anything other than you. It's not your hands or your mom or dad or your guitar or anything. It's you. How far do you want to go on that spectrum? That's it. And it's infinite. You can go in this direction infinitely. You can always learn. You can always get better. You can always get faster, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That, you, you guys believe that, right? I hope you do because it's true. And that's with anything in life, right? 
Mary, Mary Beth's in UGS. I absolutely love UGS. I've learned so much and I'm looking forward to continuing learning from it. It's absolutely unstoppable. It's UGS, the unstoppable guitar system. After learning, I can go back and listen to, again, because each section has tons of information that I have to go back in order to absorb it all. Thank you so much, Mary Beth. That's, that's so sweet. Uh, what do you think about Squire guitars? Have you ever played one? I have. It's a cheaper line. Cheaper lines don't play as nice as the more expensive lines. Basic common sense there. Um, so, you know, I have folks all the time that say, what's the best, cheapest guitar? That's like saying, what's the biggest, small thing you can find? It's like the two don't really go together. Uh, you got to pick one. One has to be a priority, either cheap or best. <laughs> As you say best, they go up in price. If you say cheap, they go down in price, right? Um, I have the complete guitar system on Unity. How does this compare to the to the Unstoppable Guitar System is the name of it, David. Unstoppable Guitar System has many, 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 many more videos, has the jam tracks, has the live broadcasts, uh, constantly updated each month with new material. Uh, Udemy is not so much like that. Uh, we have the biggest system uh, of, of all the courses on there, probably if you put them all together, uh, and it's the most popular one, but it still doesn't compare with the Unstoppable Guitar System. It's just a bigger set of of videos, of lessons, of ways to navigate the whole nine yards. So that's, I do have a video on it though, if you were to search Unstoppable Guitar System Udemy, but it's an older video. So much has changed. Unstoppable Guitar System's got so much bigger, it's just not even funny. It's just ginor ginormous. Uh, Karen's saying, thank you, Eric. You're the best. UGS is amazing. Everyone should jump into UGS. It's the most amazing process ever. Yay, thank you so much, Karen. I so appreciate it. Uh, I have the 30 free lessons, great. Uh, I have 30 free lessons and now 365 guitar plan, 30 day trial. Um, how do I just focus on 365 guitar plan? Uh, Lula, you focus on the 365 guitar plan by just looking at the 365 guitar plan. Seriously, right? You can get into the 30 day whenever you want. Um, but I suggest you do both. There's nothing wrong with doing both. Take, you know, 5, 10, 20 minutes, half hour, whatever on 365, and then keep going through the course. There's nothing wrong with doing that. This is more just to kind of keep you sharp at all these different areas so that it all starts coming together, okay? But if you really don't want to focus on anything else, then just go to the 365 Guitar Plan and that's it, okay? Just open up that portion of the program. Don't go to the, the 30 day, okay? Mark's saying Udemy is great, but UGS is more comprehensive. Indeed, indeed, yes. Okay. Uh, does it matter if you have an acoustic or electric guitar in most of the lessons? Doesn't matter at all. I play acoustic guitar about half the time and electric guitar about the other half of the time and I my mind g goes back and forth between the two. It's like the difference between driving a sports car and a sedan. Uh, they both have wheels, they both have steering wheels, they drive, you get to some place, they drive a little bit differently, but they're both the same thing, basically, you know? Does that make sense? Uh, what were the last prizes you announced in the giveaway before the Strat was won? Those were memberships to the Unstoppable Guitar System. We gave away eight of those today, uh, Lula. Okay, uh, just to add to the pool of real people who've BD, uh, BTDT, I'm not sure what that means, sorry. I've been playing guitar for 15 years. My skill level spiked 15 years ago and stayed the same until this last nine months. The game changer for me was UGS. Nice, first 30 days uh, for real. And yes, after the 30 days, you will want UGS. I do. It's uh, awesome, you guys. It's worth it. Way more than a dollar. Thank you so much, Antonia. That's so sweet. I really appreciate that. Super kind. Yay, uh, just signed up for 365. Can I stop and start where I left off? Indeed. You'll see a little thing, Chris. Anybody, every, everybody who's getting in this today, right? It's a buck for both of them. UGS, 365. When you're in there, there basically you can say video's completed. You'll see like a little thing. And in fact, there's an introductory video that you're going to see that'll teach you how to navigate the site, what to do, how to search, um, all that. It's a real short video, but it'll save you a ton of time if you watch it. And it'll show you how to say, hey, I've watched th this video already. Okay, and then you'll see it. So you'll go through the list, you'll be like, oh, I've seen that already, this one now. So there's definitely a way to do that, okay? Um, okay, hey Eric, don't see you and don't hear you, only see the chat roll. Um, add. Siri's jumping in. Siri's jumping in on me here. What, what are you doing, Siri? 
getting weird on me. Yeah, she's one of my devices is starting to listen. Uh, Ad you're, means you're doing something wrong, my friend. Means you're means you're doing something wrong if you can't see me. Um, okay, guitar mastery in hand. Neighbors now like me. What? <laughs> guitar mastery uh, is a book that I wrote. Guitar mastery simplified. So uh, Beach Bum just got that, I think, right? Um, the open strings have two E notes: low E, high E. How can I play these two E's in chords? Well, if you play E major chord, you're right there, you know what I mean? If you play it in a C chord, you got it. But if you play it in a G chord, it's gonna sound weird. Not weird, if you play it in an A chord, you could do it. So there's certain chords you could do it in, certain ones that you wouldn't because that E note is not an ingredient in the recipe of a specific chord. In some chords it is the, in the recipe and then you would use it. Otherwise you would not. Make sense? Okay. The pool is calling strict 92. Get in that pool, my friend. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, your 365 guitar practice. Can you demonstrate real quick what the tab is showing? Steven, I would, but I already went over that. And for the sake of everybody else here um, who we did this with, I won't do that again. Okay. But here's the deal, Steven. Take advantage of the dollar the dollar offer today because here's the deal. Number one, we've never offered this before. Uh, 365 is literally, this is the kickoff. This is this is the inaugural event. So you're getting both of them for a buck today to trial for 30 days, unlimited access, right? Um, and here's the deal. One of the first videos that are inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System is a real quick tutorial to teach you how to read tablature. Better, more succinct, and more detailed than what I would be able to show you right now because I'm not, I don't have the page in front of me and it's, it's not gonna make as much sense as doing that. So literally get in there for a buck, watch it today. You're gonna have not have an issue at all with 365. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, no, it still didn't. I just still don't know what I'm doing to be charged after the free trial. I'm telling you uh, that you're gonna have different ways clogged to do this. Uh, after the dollar trial, after 30 days, you will either, depending on what you've chosen, right? If, you, if you're doing the monthly, you're gonna be charged $40. That would be the charge then. Uh, it's, a, it's a subscription price, or you can just buy the whole thing, or you can do payments for the whole thing. There's several different ways to do it. Okay, Jason answered that. Thank you, Jason. Okay, for the 365 course, are all weeks unlocked, or do they get unlocked af one after each other? Uh, Jean, I think that's how to say your name. I'm not 100% sure how we did that. Hmm. Okay, I'm pretty sure they're all unlocked. Oh yeah, Jason just said they're all unlocked. Yeah, we were considering doing that at, at some point because we really wanted folks to stay on course. We wanted them to have blinders on be specifically because it will benefit the student, okay? If I can help my, my, my little guy, my little buddy who's two and a half years old, if I can help him be focused, he's going to be better off in life than if I let him run amok, okay? When we have someone to guide us and help us be focused, we can conquer the world. But we're running amok doing this, that, and the other thing. It can get a little bit weird. So the, we were originally thinking about doing that with 365, right? But then we said, look, we've got the day-by-days. We've got the week by weeks. We got the step by step. We've got it to where they can mark off the video and say, "Hey, I've done that one." So the chances of you guys falling off of that are really highly unlikely. Now that we had all that set up the way we have it set up, and you know there may be somebody in there who's just like a savant who's just gonna kick ass through all you know 365 of them and just rage down the road. But I would implore you to not do that. Just stay on course. Okay, if you really want to slay it, then get faster at that one particular exercise that day. Get more accurate at that one particular exercise that day. There's a real discipline in this and you don't, like, if you don't understand already that the power is in this focus, then I'm telling you, trust me, okay? The power is in the focus of doing this. It's going to help you so much, okay? Okay, great, 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 great. Um, I got an acoustic guitar for $200. Keep it, in my, keep it upstairs by my computer that plays very well. Key was I went to the guitar shop, Appalachian guitar that doesn't carry junk at any price. Good. Nice. Love it. 
What's the best way to learn? Okay, we did that one. We answered that one. Uh, Marcus saying, hey, Eric, how often do you find the time to practice yourself with your schedule? You're regularly posting on various social media outlets, shopping, posting new vids, new lessons. Do you use a different clock than the rest of us? Mark is saying. Mark, um, I know, right? It seems that way too in my own life. Um, so I've recently, the last seven months or, or so, I've literally been doing this thing where I'm sleeping a little bit less. Like I'm, I'm sleeping about five hours a night, five to six hours. Uh, so that's given me an extra two, three hours uh, per day. But I'm doing this like real specific regimen where I'm sleeping less. Uh, so that's a little bit helpful. But also, um, I really try to cut out anything that's not serving me. So um, I'm not judging anybody who watches TV. I'm not saying I don't watch TV, but I do it very, very, very rarely because I found that it was just wasting my time. So what I did is I stopped getting on Facebook. I stopped watching TV. I stopped listening to complaining people and this, that, and the other. I just started cutting all this bull crap out of my life. And I found out that, oh, look, look at all this time that was available that was always there that, dear Lord, oh, now it's, now it, now I can see it because I got rid of that crap. So um, that's what I did. I know it sounds like I'm preaching or whatever, but I'm not. I'm just saying this worked for me. It may not work for you. TV and Facebook may be very uplifting for you, but I just found for me, it just brought me down, sucked all my energy out. And even when I wasn't looking to argue or get on, just people were posting crazy things on there. And believe it or not, still right now they are. And they're going to be tomorrow and they're going to be a next day and the next day and the next day and the next year. And so why even get on there and bother with that? So I just cut out all the bull crap from my life. And I said, these are the things I want to do. I want to spend time with my family. I want to get better at my life. I want to get better at guitar. I want to do things for people. I want to serve the world. I want to teach guitar. And boom, my day is full already. I like three or four or five things and I'm done and I don't even finish getting everything done I want at the end of the day. So um, so that's kind of how I've been real, but it's been taking a lot of discipline and a lot of self introspection is just saying, cut this crap out. It's not serving you. Move on. Forge on. Um, thank you for asking that, Mark. And thank you for the kind words. Bob saying, after your many years of playing, how far can you spread your pinky and ring finger? Uh, well, Bob, not, I don't know if that means anything, but you know, I guess maybe the sixth fret if I'm, you know, but you know, I guess if we're up here, I could do it a lot further. But um, at the end of the day, no one cares about that, whether it's you or me or anything. They just want you to play a song. So that's the good thing, Bob. That's the good news is that um, even though you could do a, a great stretch, um, I've never seen anybody ask that of like Stevie Ray Vaughan or any of these great players. They just want you to play a good song. So that's good news for guys like us where you just want to play some cool chords and, and riffs and stuff like that, right? But yeah, I know it's interesting to say, well, how far could you reach? Um, the reason I, I kind of uh, loathe that a little bit, no, I think the question question's great, but like, you know, in high school and stuff, guys would be like, well, how far can you reach? Yeah, well, I, can reach this, I can reach the eighth fret. Great. Can you play a song? Because I really don't care how far you can reach. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was always like, what does that mean? Uh, it doesn't really mean anything. Or someone's like, well, I can drum at this speed. It's like, cool. Can you keep a groove? Because I really don't care how fast you can play. But if you can keep a groove, I might listen. Um, but that's just, you know, you're around great musicians all the time, especially here in Nashville. There are certain things that don't matter. And Nashville will immediately purge all that bull crap from, from players if they're really playing out and stuff because they get to the stuff that really matters, like playing a groove and sitting in the pocket and all that good stuff. But yeah, that's it's still, still a good question, uh, Bob. Thank you, bud. Can you do the 199 lifetime after the $1 trial? I'm pretty sure, Mike, but I don't know. I'll wait for Jason to answer that. Oh, Mike, he just answered that. I need to I need to be looking at these. Nope. You get one opportunity for that. Okay, one opportunity for that. And it's like just right there in the beginning. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll be looking, Jason, for your answers from now on. Sorry about that. Okay. Great, great, great questions. Those folks that are on YouTube... You know where you should be? YourGuitarStage.com slash live. If you're like, why isn't he answering my questions? Your Guitar Sage. It's because I'm not there. I'm over at YourGuitarStage.com slash live. And we have a chat there. And like literally, you're, you just, it, you're just in and then I can answer your questions. So get over there, my friends. Uh, plus the PDF there and, and the deal today. If you're wondering where the deal's at, it's YourGuitarStage.com slash June 1. 
or the description, the, the, the links in the description of the video, okay? Where can I get one of those invisible straps? Uh, how is it, how is that staying on your thigh when your arms <laughs> are not on it, James is saying. There really are invisible straps that are, well, they're acrylic clear, but um, I know, right? I, I, I guess it sat on my lap for so darn long here, it's just become a part of me, so I love that. Uh, great, great. Um, all right, all right, all right, all right. Where can you find guitars besides the Guitar Center? Jay, do a Google search for your town there, my friend. Look for some guitar shops. I'm sure you answered this already, but how do I get the lifetime membership for the $199 deal? Um, Jason just posted that right underneath you, Mel. Uh, to right underneath you, my friend. And that will, that will get you to the place where you can do it. Um, I have a question about pedals in my sound. Sean's saying, have you cut anything like that or can I ask it here? Yeah, you can ask it. But yes, inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, it's a buck today. You get 30 days of this, okay, Sean? So check this out. I go through the whole enchilada about everything that's involved in your sound, from the pick to the strings to the pickup to the wood in your guitar to the cable that goes to your amp to the type of amp you have to the type of tubes you have to the speaker that you have to the pedals that you have to just every single stack that you that would require to coming up with your sound. Me and my guitar tech went through every little possible scenario that would make sense without just becoming completely ridiculous, although we got pretty ridiculous at how far we went with it, as to how your sound is affected by the different variables, okay? And we cover that in a lot of detail. Or is this just a chords video? Nope, I, I, I don't want to ask anything out of context. Sean, ask away. That's what I'm here for. So ask away. But yes, all that's covered in there. And literally, Sean, it's available for one buck today. You have 30 days to peruse everything. It's an unlimited access for 30 days to all of the Unstoppable Guitar System uh, and all of 365, okay? Um, okay. Uh, Mary Beth has just said I went to 365 again and is there a way of checking off the week that I have already completed and there wasn't any way to, no you check off each individual video Mary Beth not a week because remember there's there's different tabs so if you still haven't found that then let me know otherwise uh, we'll have somebody take a look at it but it's the same it's the same bit it's the same system okay it's just parsed out differently but individual videos not the week Okay, so you're going to do a video. If you miss Wednesday, well, you might have hit all the other days. So it's not by week. It's by, it's by, by video lesson. Okay? But, I, but you may be talking about something else. Okay? I'll, have, I'll see if Jason can, can do that. Uh, the guitar is part of him. Does that mean he'll ship himself off with a guitar to the winner? <laughs> I don't think my wife or kid would allow, would allow me to do that. Uh, all right, so now is a great time to get some questions in there because the chat slowed just a little bit. We had 500 in here uh, recently, and now we've, we're down to 2.30. We're going to go another 20 minutes, my friend, and we're going to end at 2 p.m. today. Why? Because... Um, I'm going to be heading to the NAMM show today. It's the last day, the last couple hours. I'm only going to get there for about an hour and a half. That's the... the uh, um, the National Association of Music Merchants or something like that. Basically, it's just like guitars, 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 and amps, 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 and pedals, pedals, pedals uh, in, the, in uh, downtown Nashville. And, and I'm going to try to catch that real quick and, uh, and have a little fun there. Um, so I'm going to do that in 20 minutes, 22 minutes. And I got a buddy who's li literally sitting outside in his car, will be soon here, and we're going to be taking off, hightailing it right at 2 o'clock. So make sure you get those questions in there. The chat slowed down just a little bit, so I want to get to those questions. If you're on uh, YouTube, head over. You're guitarstage.com slash live. Okay? Good, good. Um, yeah, refresh the page of the video quit, my friends. Uh, best way to go about looping a fully acoustic guitar. Uh, well, you're going to need a microphone for that or you're going to need a pickup. So you could use a microphone and plug that into your looper and you'd have the same effect, essentially. Okay? Video stop. Okay, well, we're back going now. Okay, at least we can see the strat still. Video's good to go. Yeah, you guys are good. Just, uh, oh, David. 
What will you be? Oh, I thought you said you're going to the NAMM show. What will I be looking for at the NAMM show? I'm just going to be looking for anything that catches my eye. Uh, new technologies. I love some, some new technology. If they're, if they're legit, I don't like, you know, bells and whistles for bells and whistles, but... Um, but I, I like new technologies, and I love to see what, what folks are doing in the guitar market and uh, picks, the whole nine yards. I love seeing it all. So um, I'll, be, I'll be just seeing what jumps out at me. You know, see, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be some great players there and what have you, although it's the last day and the last couple hours. But, uh, in fact, Chris, um, my, my right-hand man here, is going to be going with me too. So I'm very excited about that. Is it better to use a pedal board before the amp or use the effects built into the amp? Brian, it just depends, to be quite honest with you. There's not a better way. There may be a better way that's for you. Now, uh, you could use, if you have a looping system inside of your amp, that's a great way to, but it's, it's a little bit more complex than just putting it before the amp, but you can save on some sound and create a more dynamic sound. That sort of thing. If you're using the, the, the looping system inside the amp, which is different than a looper pedal, okay? Um, but uh, most people will put the effects before the amp. It's just a simple way to do it. If you put it in the order, if you put the effects in order, like I talk about in the Ultimate Pursuit of Tone section of the UGS website that you're getting for a buck today, then if you do that in order, then you put it all right before the amp, bingo, bango, jango, you're rocking and rolling and whatnot. Does that make sense? Okay, now, the, now, for instance, I've got the Kemper amp and all the effects are built into it, but it's like a $2,500 amp. So it's got some insane effects and the amp is amazing too. So in that case here, I don't put any effects before the amp that just is all in one type of thing. But that's that and that's a very specific thing, you know. What should I do to change between chords fast? Because I'm struggling with that. Irene, don't play them fast play them accurately. The reason that you are struggling with it is because you haven't, now don't get offended with this, but listen to everybody, because this is not just Irene I'm talking to, I'm talking to everybody. The reason you can't do a particular something on the guitar is because you haven't earned it. Now don't get insulted, listen to me. Uh, this is your salvation right here, I'm giving it to you. You haven't earned it. What that means is you haven't done the specific bits and pieces that should allow you to be able to play that part. Now, I know that's a little bit of a hard thing to hear because it seems like you've done so much to get to there, but it just means you haven't done enough, okay? Now, it could be that you're doing it in a way that's inefficient that I could show you that'll get you there quicker. I mean, there's a lot of that out there, right? A ton of stuff that you can learn that'll get you there quicker, 100%. But um, the reason being is you know, what, what happens is people try to play fast before they've earned it, and then it just gets frustrating. So all I say is this. If you're focusing on speed, frustration will follow. If you focus on accuracy, speed will follow. You can try to do it the other way. You're only gonna, it's only going to make you frustrated. But if you listen to me, because I've only done this a little while, almost 40 years now, if you practice accuracy, speed will follow, and you won't be pissed off. Okay, slow it down and try speeding it up each time. Leon just said, thank you so much, Leon. Indeed, right? All right. All right. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, 199 Lifetime Membership is available right now, today. Okay, yes. Uh, Brian's saying, yes, I've got the looping, the looping inside of my Line 6 Spider Jam. Uh, the $1.30 day trial ends next week. I think on Thursday we were saying, I'm not sure when that is, but nonetheless, um, as Franklin, as uh, Benjamin Franklin said, don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we've never done something like this before. We've never made, number one, UGS, or 365 never, never been available. And the dollar offer, we used to do that way long ago. We did it for 14 days, but here we're doing it for 30 days. And does that make sense? You're, you're getting, we've never done this before, okay? Uh, starting 2.0 over and I'm finding things I missed. Awesome course. Thank you so much, Gene. So what he's talking about is 2.0. We just, the big unstoppable guitar system that we've been working with on for years, we now have it on a new system. It's it's more robust. It's You can do some different things with it. It's into new look, the whole nine yards. So, uh, so check that out, okay? Um... 
okay, Eric, thank you so much for lessons on Stray Cat. Strut Stray Cat, uh, only three months of rare practice, and I play a couple of rock and roll solos. Nice. Love it. Uh, Mark got the ditto pedal, and that's amazing. Della, thank you so much. Yeah, it's not an insult. I just want to really try to, 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 to get you in the mindset, Irene, because everybody goes through this. It's not you. It's everybody. I've done it a million times. I'm practicing something. Why aren't I faster? It's not cool. And if you think about that, not only does that build stress in your body, is it's kind of like standing over a child if you are both the child and the teacher standing over yourself saying, why aren't you going faster? If you've ever been in a place where you're trying to balance something or you're trying to do something very tedious or very specific and someone's saying, come on! And you're like, dear God, if you could just shut up, I could do this. Don't be that to yourself. Okay, be that gentle teacher that says, hey man, you can do this. I believe in you. You're an unlimited being and you can absolutely do this, but you gotta do the work, okay? And that's the, that's the mantra you wanna say to yourself is put in the work, put in the hours, put in the time. You will be so amazed at what you are possible, you know, the possibilities that are within you to do if you do the, that work. And if you don't stretch yourself out saying it has to happen like that, okay? Leanna has a looper in his Fender Mustang GT. I know, and that's so amazing, right? Are all lessons applicable for lefties? Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're a lefty or a righty, it's, it's all the same. And in fact, I used to make lefty videos, and then lefties were literally emailing me saying, please don't do that. The, right, the righty videos are better for me because it's a mirror image. Because if you think about it, if I'm holding a guitar like this, lefties, you can attest for this, uh, the guitar is going that way for you and you it's just like a mirror it's like we're looking in the mirror so they said it's easier that way so actually a righty looking at a righty video it's harder right so yeah lefty righty doesn't matter it's for everybody you know uh donald i don't know about the marshall code amps there's so many new amps coming out right now that um that uh like I, there's so many you know uh, Brian just did the $1 offer. Cha-ching! That's fun. Awesome. Great, bro. We need to have like a little bell or something that goes off every time somebody does that. Every time someone gets in the system. Yay! <laughs> I'm telling you, Brian, you're going to lose your mind. There's it, the, the content's amazing and you're going to, it's going to make you an amazing player if you do the work, right? I can only lead you there and then show you do this, do this, do this. But if you do it, I promise you, you're going to see massive results. It's impossible not to. Our brain, you'd have to have some brain that science is like, look at this guy's brain. He can sit there and learn things over and over again or do things over and over again, but yet he's incapable of learning. It's never happened. It's never happened. It's called, uh, it's called neural elasticity, okay? And it's not just for young people. They've now proven that, that you can, it, at any age, your brain will grow. It's called, it's called neural elasticity. Look it up. I watch videos on stuff like that all the time because I teach and I'm interested in that. But your brain, you can grow, you can prevent Alzheimer's and all sorts of stuff from literally just doing these sorts of things, from exercising your brain. That's not a cure-all, but I'm saying they've proven this already, that you can do this. Doing stuff with the left hand, if you're a right hand, it activates the brain in different ways. Using your right hand if you're a left, lefty, that sort of thing, you know. I'm going through the minimalistic blues section now, and it's and alone it's worth a hundred bucks. Thank you so much, Ronald. I appreciate that. Uh, the minimalistic blues section is really cool because it shows you how to speak the blues, how to learn how to phrase. Okay, um, and blues is a perfect genre for learning how to phrase. Okay. By the way, all this stuff works for mobile as well. That's what the whole new system is all about, is about mobile too, because we have so many folks going to mobile on their phone, whatever. So you can be on vacation, have your little travel guitar and, and be sitting with Eric and I'll be sitting here teaching you, okay, with your daggone phone. So either that or you'd have to come to visit me in Nashville all the time, okay? Uh, and also with all the videos, you have PDFs. Um, you have PDFs for, for any videos that needs one, which is a lot of them have them. Uh, and then uh, also uh, Guitar Pro files. So you have interactive, playable, malleable, editable PDFs or editable uh, files, okay, that, that play. You can slow down, speed up, whatever, okay? Um, 365, is there a book or do you have to print the lessons every day? Gene, there's no book. There are PDFs. You don't print them up. You just pull them right up there on your screen, right underneath 
or in another tab or whatever, and bingo, bango, it's right there for you. So you watch the video, you listen to it, okay, it sounds like that, cool. You look at the PDF and you're, and you're off to the races. You don't have to print anything up. You don't want to print anything up. If you're like me and you want to, you know, keep from chopping down trees, you don't have to print it up, you know? All right. Back, back when I always looked like I just woke up, right? I know, that's, that's true. I probably did just wake up. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, David, yes, Jason just answered that question for you. <laughs> Caleb, every time a bell rings, a guitar is, is, gets UGS, right? Just like, uh, what was it? Uh, it's a Wonderful Life, one of my favorite movies, right? Love that movie. Nice. Yep. I use this on my system on my iPad. My, nice, Mark. Yeah. Uh, just, I mean, that is huge. Is to be able to actually have these videos, you know, on your, on your computer, on your iPad, on your phone. It makes it so, so nice. And when you're logged in, it's like you could be on your computer and then ah, I gotta go. And you're going off to vacation or you're going off to work or whatever. And during lunch, you brought your guitar. Now you're at lunch. You just pull up your system. It's your login. So it's the same thing. You know, so now you're looking at the same videos and oh, it's the video is on because I marked it. Bingo, bango, jango, you're in. Make sense? Rahan, sorry I just joined. Who won the Fender Strat? You missed it, Rahan. You won. No, I'm joking. You didn't. Uh, somebody else did. Um, I don't think it was Rahan. It was somebody, some other name. But uh, it's, at the one, it's at the one hour mark. Um, how long is the $1 offer staying? I believe that is going to be to Thursday. I'm pretty sure we're doing that till Thursday. Yeah, there you go. Next Thursday, July the 4th. Okay, next Thursday. Oh, July the 5th. Yeah, that's this, that's this Thursday coming up. Okay, this Thursday. Uh, great. All right. Uh, we've got a little less than 10 minutes, my friends. If you got questions, now is the time to ask. If you're at YouTube, friends, yourguitarsage.com slash live. I swear if I go to YouTube right now and I see people type in there, I'm going to have someone's head. Look, people are typing there. That's okay. They're probably just talking amongst themselves, right? Um, that's okay. You guys are just talking amongst yourselves, right? Because I really do want to answer your questions. So if you're on YouTube right now, Look at the link that's in the description of this video, friends, and go over there because I want to get to your questions. And this is your last time. We've got eight minutes for me to answer your questions at yourguitarstage.com slash live. Also, there's the PDF that if you just joined us, so I know some folks just joined us, um, the, use that PDF and watch this video when it's done. We'll have it up afterwards, okay? Watch that video. Use the PDF. And then you're going to see a link at the very bottom there. It's a little brown button. You click on that. It's the $1 offer for those that just joined us. Literally what we're doing is we're just kicking off the 365 guitar plan. You're going to get it for 30 days, unlimited access, all the videos in it um, for $1. And not only that, we're also throwing in the whole enchilada of the Unstoppable Guitar System for $1. You're going to get 30 days access to the whole enchilada. Okay, so um, 30 day 30 day trial, and then you're gonna have some options if you want to continue on. Okay, there's different ways that you can do it, but you'll but I won't go into all those details. Just check out that link. Okay. Okay, now we have seven minutes, so I want to make sure I get your questions answered. Okay. Uh, okay, we've got 200 people in the chat room still. And we got seven minutes. Let's get some. Let's get some questions answered. Uh, just added another cork board to the tack up. More important papers. Nice. 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 By the way, folks, for those who have never watched these broadcasts before, uh, we do this. Well, we do it almost every Thursday. We do it typically uh, once a month, these bigger ones where we're giving stuff away. And we're doing that more and more and more because it's just so fun to reach a lot of people. I mean, back in the day when I used to teach one-on-one -on -one students and I'd literally have 70 lessons in a week. 70 lessons! My wife was pulling her hair out because we had people, we had this like house where it was a open open floor plan. So everybody walked in the center. If you went to the bathroom or your bedroom or anything, it's like you have to walk through and have guests. 70 lessons a week. It was nuts. Uh, but it was fun and, uh, and I love doing that. But nonetheless, uh, here, this is so cool because I can reach so many folks 
with the same message and we're, 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 we're all learning at once, right? Isn't that cool? Um, how do musicians keep 500 songs at their fingertips? I find that amazing. Spicy, you would have to just keep coming back to those songs, but also there's methods to understand and, and for listening, and I teach these inside the course, okay? Um, uh, having cheat sheets or, um, what's the word? Oh, cheat, not cheat, but uh, fake, fake books. Uh, fake books. F-A-K-E, are great because they will help because they give you the, the Cliff Notes version, if you will, Spark Notes, um, that sort of thing. Okay. What is the best address to write you a letter? Tom is saying. Tom, if you look, I think any of my videos are on YouTube. I have a P.O. box out there. Uh, Jason may put it up, but I don't know it off the top of my head. I end up every day when I go to check the mail, I end up going to the wrong P.O. box because it's like such a long number. Uh, that I literally forget the P.O. box every single time that I go to the P.O. box. So I couldn't even tell you what it is. But it's in my, it's in the, the description of my videos, okay? Five more minutes, my friends. How does your unstoppable guitar system differ from your beginner to advanced course on Udemy? Is it more intermediately interactive? Unstoppable guitar system has everything. Beginner, intermediate, advanced, nearly 600 videos. Um, also, it has... Um, nearly 600 jam tracks, and for unstoppable uh, guitar system folks, um, I believe they to, um, well, well, we also do these live broadcasts, so there's so much more in the unstoppable that's in the Udemy, even though that's a great course, not knocking it, it's the number one course on their, on their site, but, um, it's the number one guitar lesson course on their site, but unstoppable is hands down it's the it's the Cadillac, it's the Rolls Royce of, you know, and that one is a Lexus, which is great. Love Lexus. Um, trying to plan my week. Will there be a lesson on thir uh, this Thursday? Uh, yes, yes, there will be one on this Thursday. I'm going to be teaching again live this Thursday, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook and YouTube. So join us for that, okay? Are there any lessons on how to sing while playing uh, on UGS. There is. There's a whole section, a specific section on singing and playing at the same time. Indeed. Okay. Bingo, bango, Jenga. Caleb, get in there. It's a buck. I'll, I'll literally teach you how to go about each step on how to play and sing at the same time. It's just a step by step. Okay. All right. Three minutes, friends, and we're going to close up shop because I got to get to the NAM show. And by now, you should know what to do. The dollar offer, it's, I'm going to give you way more information than if I were to sit, sit with you here for another three hours, okay? Having a killer time getting the right touch to get that harmonic to ring out. Any tips on developing that touch? Yes, watch the harmonics series. Do I have a series? I definitely have the videos in it inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System. So I am. Watch the harmonics videos. And once you're in, once you do the, the, the dollar offer, go to the upper left-hand corner and type in harmonics because I have way more information in those videos then I could sit with you here one-on-one -on -one and do. Okay, lead sheet. That was one of the things I was looking for, but also fake book, yeah. A good affordable acoustic guitar, go to uh, kit.com slash your guitar sage, but uh, Epiphone Master Built is a great one. But you check out check out that link, uh, the kit.com slash your guitar sage, because that has the links in there for you so you don't have to remember anything. Um, have you ever done a write a song in one hour challenge? No, but I could write a song in one hour, definitely. But it, it's not gonna it's not gonna sound like a hit song, um, you know. I don't think. <laughs> but I could write a song in an hour. I've done it. <laughs> but again, you know what I'm saying? It's uh, one hour. No, I've never done that. All right, my folks, we are closing up shop. Two, one minute left here. Um, I'm literally gonna end right at two o'clock. You guys have been awesome. You're rock stars. We literally have 200 people in the chat room right now and, uh, and, over, at, uh, and over at YouTube, we have 178 people still watching. How cool is that? So like nearly 400 people still watching. Love you guys. You guys are my inner sanctum. I say that to my UGS folks all the time, but anybody who's stuck around for three hours to watch some goon with a guitar talk and talk and talk and talk, 
You guys are rock stars. I love that. Thank you so much. And thank you for the great questions that you guys, thank you for playing full out. Uh, anybody who literally just joined us, yourguitarsage.com slash live. Um, just look for the link. You're going to see that in the description of the video if you're watching this after it was recorded, which is, you know, today is June the 30th. Uh, midday, so it's 2 o'clock Central Standard Time that this is ending, um, then you know what to do. Uh, there's a link inside the description of the video. Go there and that'll take you to the deal. The deal is ending on, on Thursday, okay? If you forget about it and it's after Thursday, then you lost, okay? So if you think you might forget about it, do it now. It's literally a buck. You can get out of the program whenever you want. If you're learning too much, if you're slaying it and you're just like, I can't, I can't stand being such a great guitar player, then get the hell out of there, okay, before you're subscribed. Otherwise, just stick in there and you're going to learn an insane amount of stuff and be a great guitar player. Dollar Offer um, ends on Thursday, okay, and I'll be doing another live broadcast that day. Join me then. Love you guys. Thank you so much. If you need anything else, you know where to find me on Facebook, Twitter, all those places. And if you can, one more time before you guys leave, share this uh, so that other people can see it. I would love that. That would be a real nice thing. I so appreciate you guys. Love you. Thank you so much. Jason, thank you so much for helping me with this. And Chris, thank you so much for helping me with this. I could not do this without you guys because it's a lot to keep up with. And thanks for everybody for joining me today. Love you guys. Uh, click on that link. Dollar offer right now is ending. All right. See ya.